basically had to rush the pass. Wide receiver was not ready for it. Excellent three and out by the Grambling defense to get the ball back. Oh, the Jordan baby. Alliance will have to punt it away. Almost blocked. High spiraling kick. Chad Williams back deep for Grambling. The ball will go out of bounds at the Grambling. Uh, let's see where the official goes. 30-yard line, first and 10 for the Grambling Tigers at their 30. Yeah, I was going to say UAPB leads the SWAC in punting. So they pretty, have a pretty good punting team. Uh, they play special teams, especially on the punt, pretty well. And that was a pretty good kick. It just went out of bounds a little early. It landed around the 20, 25-yard line, went out around the 30, as the official said. So it's going to be first down and 10 for the Tigers from their own 30-yard line. Let's see what the offense can do. Grambling State University will come out for their first offensive possession of the ball game. Tigers of Grambling State, the second best scoring offense in the Southwestern Athletic Conference, averaging 38.8 uh, points per game. Swing set to both sides here on first down and 10. Shotgun formation for and grenade Kincaid. Kincaid with time, looking. Going deep to Chad Williams. Has a step on the man. Chad Williams will catch it. 10, 5, touchdown Tigers. And that's how you want to start homecoming off. The offensive line did a great job blocking. Stayed where they were supposed to be. Did their job. Kincaid had all day to throw that ball. Chad Williams getting separation down the middle of the field. Gets it right in his hands. Fantastic pass. Fantastic catch run after the catch by Chad Williams into the end zone, uncontested for a touchdown. Chad Williams gets it to the end zone, 70 yards to start the game. One play, one score, and the Tigers strike. First blood, six to nothing with 13.56 left to go here in the first quarter of play. Here is the snap for the extra point. It is down, it is up, and it is good. Timeout on the field, and we'll take one right along with them. 13.56 remaining in the first quarter of play. Grambling seven, time bluff nothing. You're listening to the Grambling Sports Radio Network. We'll be right back. Tigers get down the field and cover their lanes pretty well on that kickoff. As the kickoff was returned by Jamal Blatt, not for much, though. He was leveled by Orlando Calhoun, junior out of Lafayette, Louisiana. Just came out like a dart and stuffed it right at the 30. Arkansas Pine Bluff will have a penalty to start one of the areas of concern Coach Monty Coleman had with his team coming into this game. What was that you were saying in the pregame? They feel like they're 100 yards behind yes. before they even get off the bus, and that's exactly what you're talking about right there. False start, going to move them back five yards. You cannot do that, especially after a play like Grambling just had. One play, one touchdown. you got to get, you got to at least get some kind of rhythm going if you're UAPB. First and 15 for the Golden Lions. At the Golden Lions 25-yard line, 13-52 remaining here in the first quarter of play. Shotgun formation, twin set. Here is the speed sweep look. Duncan will keep it. He'll be tackled immediately by one of the Grambling Tigers. Not sure exactly who that is that came up to make that play. He has a jersey on it on there. One of the linebackers, it looks like. Yeah, it's the Cooper. It, it, I, I'm trying to look and see who it is now. Uh, it's either uh, Wells or Donovan McCray, I think. Actually, it was Christmas okay. that stepped up and made that tackle. 
shotgun formation here on second down and 15. Twin set to the near side. One receiver going in motion. That's Willie Young underneath. Duncan will throw it underneath to Young, who will be hit with cruel intention by a couple of different Grambling Tigers. The first guy there was Guy Stallworth. Guy Stallworth, who's had a fantastic season, who's really been sturdy for the Grambling Tiger defense. When you look at the UAPB offense, Willie really Young is a guy that you've got to have be your playmaker, and he's trying as best as he possibly can, but that defense is swarming around him every time he gets near the ball. Pick up a five on the play, brings it third down and 10, with a little over 12 minutes left to go in the first quarter. Trip set to the far side. Now the inside slot will go in motion to the near side. Pressure coming right up the middle. Duncan is hit immediately. Pass is going to be complete to Willie Young. Just looks like a yard or so shy of a first down at the time of 39. Duncan could feel the heat coming from his blind side, was still able to get the ball out, throw across his body to his receiver around the 40-yard line, 39, make that the 39, and he was brought down immediately. Now the question is, what do you do if you're UAPB? High Bluff will line up, and look like they will go for it. Double tight for a one-man split. Montgomery, the deep back, rambling, showing. Five-step drop, pressure coming. Duncan throwing. Pass is going to be incomplete. They were going down the field, but they have a flag on the play as well to Willie Young. Yeah, there's a flag on the far side. Let's see what the ref calls. 11.50 left to go in the first quarter of play. Rambling on top of Pine Bluff 7 to nothing. Sides against Grambling. If it is, it will make it a first down situation for the Grambling State University Tigers. Excuse me for the Pine Bluff Golden Lions with 11:50. Can't blame UAPB for going for it in that situation. You know, in the position that they're in right now, you got to get something happen. You try to try everything you possibly can to make something work to get a first down out of it. Tigers give up. A fourth down conversion off of a penalty, first and ten for Pine Bluff at the Pine Bluff 44. Shotgun formation. Twin set to the near side. Now the inside slot will go in motion. Play action underneath. Duncan with time. Got one-on-one -on -one coverage with Willie Young. It's incomplete. Good coverage down the field that time by Grambling State University. Looks like Josh Terry Thompson had the cover. Oh, yeah, he was right on him like a blanket in wintertime. Duncan floated the ball a little bit. If he had done, had a little bit better play through with the pass, he may have been able to get it to Willie Young, but he floated it over his head. He hasn't had the best accuracy at the beginning of this game. Shotgun formation, empty look for Pine Bluff here on second down and 10 from the 44. Rambling jumps off sides. That's going to be Samuel Reese, a guy that has really stepped up his level of play over the last couple of weeks and over the last couple of years. Coach Bob's talked about him last week at Mississippi Valley. Yeah, I got a chance to talk to Coach Bob's after the game last week about Samuel Reese, and he talked glowingly about the young man, saying that he's a great player, he's a great young man, and we've seen that over the past couple of weeks. That's an uncharacteristic mistake from Reese. Maybe a little bit of excitement for homecoming, whatever it is, you can't have that if you want to pull out that play. Second and five from the 49 of Pine Bluff. Empty look, Duncan in the backfield. Hard snap count trying to get Grambling to jump off sides. Tigers have Samuel Reese at the end. Donovan McRae at the nose. Here is the pass. Is it going to be a pass or an A fumble. They're going to call it an incomplete pass. They said his arm was going forward on the release of the football. That was just ugly. Yeah. Uh, there's no better words to describe it right there. Bubba Smart said he put it best. It's going to get ugly with that pass. He just, he, he could not, uh, maybe he couldn't get a grip on the ball. Maybe the ball was wet, morning dew. I don't know. And but he was an afternoon? Uh, maybe. Afternoon delight. I don't know. 11. Whatever it was, he could not get a grip on the ball. 11 minutes and 38 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. Seven to nothing. I was score scrambling on top. 35 for Pine Bluff at the Pine Bluff 49 yard line. Empty look, three receivers set to the far side, two to the near. Tigers have to know where Willie Young is. He's over here on the near side. Tigers to the four-man pressure. Duck 
pocket, gets out of the pocket, has time, looks, pass is going to be incomplete. Even though Willie Young caught it, but he caught it out of bounds. They're doing anything they possibly can. That's a good job by Duncan coming around here to the near side to try to extend the play and get the ball to Willie Young. He just caught it out of bounds. They're trying to do anything they can to get the ball to Willie Young. Willie Young, 5'11", 180 pounds, a young man from New Orleans, Louisiana. Back deep for Rambling State University. It'll be number two, Merlin Hunter. High bluff setting the punt, a little rugby style. End over end kick, it's gonna be fair caught and muffed by Merlin Hunter, but recovered by the Rambling Tigers. 11 minutes, 20 seconds in the first quarter of play. Seven to nothing is our score. Between Rambling and High Bluff. Let's see what happens here. In the pile, we'll make a little bit of a switch. Hey, man. Find out what's going on. Santoria Black will have the play-by-play -play duties in just a second. Back here to Eddie T. Robinson Memorial Stadium on the campus of Grambling State University with 11-14 remaining here in this first quarter of play. The Grambling Tigers on top of 7-0, a first down here by the Grambling State University Tigers. Tigers got on the board quickly in this ball game. 70-yard touchdown pass. Here's a pass underneath to Justin Kelly. And Kelly runs across the 40-yard line, gives a forearm to the defender, and goes out of bounds at the 43-yard line, and another Tiger first down. Tigers moving the ball with efficiency in today's football game. Three plays, three successful plays for Grambling State University. First down and 10 for the Grambling Tigers. Ball sitting at the 43-yard line. <coughs> Seven nothing is our score. <coughs> here is the give. Down the sideline and another first down here for the Grambling Tigers. Yeah, I believe that's one of the backup running backs for the Grambling Tigers who was able to get into this uh, football game. First down and 10. For the Grambling State University Tigers. Tigers with first down and 10. Pressure coming right at him. Gets the ball out to Chad Williams. Nice fake across the 50, 45, 40, 35, 30. Still on the sideline, 20, 15, 10, 5. Take it to the house. Touchdown, Tigers. Santoria, they'll have to follow him on Twitter after that one. Unbelievable play by Chad Williams, eluding tacklers and slipping through, and there's a flag back at the 20-yard line. Broken play. Yeah. Pressure in the face of Devontae Kincaid, he was able to get out of the pocket, makes the completion. Chad Williams walks the sideline, but a penalty is going to bring everything back. It's going to be a first down for the Tigers. Oh, wow. Yep, nullified the touchdown. First down and 10 for the Grambling State University Tigers. That was a heck of a move, though, by Chad Williams down the sideline. Chad didn't have a touchdown last week, had a couple of receptions, but wasn't really able to get into the game like he normally does. He only had three on the year, but you cannot take away the fact that he has all, over 700 yards right now this season. First down and 10 for the Grambling Tigers. Ball is resting at the 31-yard line. Kincaid gives it to Justin Kelly. Kelly bounces off tacklers, gets across oh, right at about the 30-yard line. Scotty Peace. Scotty Peace had 10 or 11 tackles on last week. 
Second down and nine yards to go for the Grambling Tigers. Trips to the near side, one receiver to the far side, and it's going to be all kinds of movement. Looks like the right side of the Grambling line could be guilty here. No, it's going to go against Cameron Wilson, the defensive end from Pine Bluff. He was already in the backfield before the snap of the ball. Oh, yeah, they're going to call it on Pine Bluff. That'll be a first down, I should say a second down and about four yards to go here. That's the second penalty in the ball game for Prime Bluff, one offensively, one defensively. Last week again, 80 yards worth of penalties in the first half against Southern. Second down and four for the Grambling State University Tigers. Devontae Kincaid back to pass, looking to his right, going down the field. Wow. Chad Williams, touchdown, Grambling State University. Chad Williams will not be denied, and six on the board for the Tigers. Second touchdown of the ball game for Chad Williams. He runs a wheel route, Santoria, and Pine Bluff loses him. Here's the question. How do you lose the best wide receiver on the Grambling Tigers football team defensively? Breakdown in coverage. He was in the end zone by himself. Touchdown, Tigers. That's one way to have a, a senior homecoming. You ain't kidding. Extra point try coming up. The hold is down, the kick is up, and it is good. Time out on the field with the score. The Grambling State University Tigers now on top, 14 to nothing. We'll take this one minute timeout, one minute. You're listening to the Grambling Sports Radio Network. I'd like to thank our friends, our supporters, our alumni, our students for all the support we've gotten in this first month here on the job at Grambling State University. As I've talked to alums and supporters, one of the questions that I hear quite often is, how can we help? We've got about 100 students here on campus that need what we call gap funding. What is gap funding? We have students who have maxed out on their uh, scholarships, grants, and, and other aid, and there is a gap between the amount they have and the amount they need. For some students, it may be an amount that's as small as $100 or $200. For some, it may be as much as 1000 These students need your help, and they need your help now to close that gap so they can complete the registration process, go to class, and start learning here on our campus. Here's how you can help our students right now. Please visit Give Campus to find our gap funding campaign or go to www.gram.edu slash gap. Or you may mail your check or money order to the Grambling University Foundation, Post Office Box 587, Grambling, Louisiana, 71245. And in the memo section of your check, just simply write gap. I just want to thank you in advance for helping our students here at Grambling State University, where everybody is still somebody.
Arkansas Pond Love. Very fortunate for the uh, Golden Lions because uh, Brandon Duncan, had he fumbled that ball, was actually Grambling already down 14 to nothing. That would have been disastrous. Yeah, you had Donovan McCray around the football, Samuel Reed, uh, Lauren Winston was around the football. You had enough guys there, just couldn't get those big tiger paws around that football. Second down and a mile for Pond Love. Five receivers set. Duncan back to pass and it is almost, incomplete. Almost intercepted. Read his coverage down the field that time. That pass was from way low. Demonte uh, Johns is a guy who almost comes away with that shoestring interception. Yeah, Demonte Johnson nearly uh, picking that ball off. And it'll bring up a third down. With about 24 yards to go here for the Grambling Tigers on the yes. upper line. Just don't draw him up like that. Well, you don't have a place to turn 24. Five receivers set. Duncan back to pass. Going downfield. Picked off by Zamonte Johnson. 45, 40, 35, 30. Down the far sideline and out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Just waiting for his opportunity, and he took it. Well, that was a good opportunity because Johnson was playing middle of the football field. That ball was thrown a little bit too high for the intended wide receiver for Arkansas, Brian Bluff. And as that ball floated on him, he was able to be in the right place at the right time. He goes up and gets the ball at his highest point and then was able to return it down inside of the Pine Bluff 25-yard line. This is the way you show uh, your ability to be dominant early in a football game because right now, Grambling is clicking on all cylinders. First down and 10 for the Grambling Tigers. Tigers still one of the best defensive units in the nation right now. Yeah, just forget about just the SWAC in the nation. You look last week, what happened against Mississippi Valley. They had their issues early on, but they recovered. Here comes Kincaid across the 15, slides at the 12-yard line, and he's uh, got a first down. We got to work with Kincaid about that because it looked like he didn't know exactly if he wanted to slide or keep running. He, you know, he, he, he looked like a little kid playing uh, Little League softball or baseball or something. Kind of broke down at the last minute. First down and 10 for the Grambling Tigers at the 12. Five receivers set. Kincaid back to pass to Merlin Hunter. Gets it at the 10, goes down to about the 8. A little slant route that time. Inside slot man runs a go to clear out things, and then Merlin Hunter runs underneath the coverage. Good job of pitching and catching right now by the Grambling Tigers. You just have to continue to find that rhythm and flow. We talked about that the other week. They had a little bit of a problem early in the game finding that flow, but Grambling is playing fast, and they're playing well. Here's the gimp. Make it third down and about 12 yards gone, but third down and eight, we'll call it that. Our sideline crew, Chastity, Jair down there. Guys, y'all all right? Actually, it's the professor. Oh, the professor's now joining us. I know you're ready to replace him. No, I did not say that. Kincaid, oh, man, Kincaid loses big-time yardage. And that's one of those things that Coach uh, Kendrick Nord said about Kincaid is that he's got to have that clock in his head and know when to get rid of the football. And we've talked about it, too, and he's holding on to the ball, trying to let that play develop. But when everything breaks down in front of you and you've got a guy within arm's length, you got to get out of there. So Grambling elects here to go for it on fourth down. I don't see why you wouldn't in this situation. I say, yeah, why not? I mean, you got a 14-point advantage. It's just like punting the football away if you don't score. Have to get down to his two-yard line if not scoring. I Here's Kincaid. Oh, no, Kincaid is in game. trouble. Throw it to the end zone. Kincaid looking. And just runs out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. Here's my thinking on it. KK's only thrown one interception all year long. Even if you throw the interception in this situation, if you throw it in the end zone, chances are the guy probably won't bring it out anyway. But he played it safe. He was able to get out of the pressure, rolled out of the pocket, still was able to pick up a few positive yards. But going back to what you were saying, just the clock. You got to know when you can get the ball out of your hands and how quickly you can get that 
that ball out of your hand. And you go back into that game against Mississippi Valley, the offense from Bramley State University, although they struck, they had a couple of problems to begin with. They had a punt, they had a fumble by Kincaid, but then after that, Kincaid found Dominique Leak. Then he found, then of course there was a, a run by Carter. So we'll see what the offense can do when they come back on the field. But meanwhile, Arkansas Pondlow's offense is on the field. They gained four yards here on first down. Yeah, pretty good job that time of just sticking that one out to the running back for Arkansas Pine Bluff, uh, Peterson. They play running back by committee here. Yeah. They don't have a solid guy that they just put in that spot. They'll run whoever it is that has the hot hand at that time. Peterson does a good job of catching that ball on the little swing and picking up about five yards. Second down and six here for the Golden Lions. Three receivers set. Duncan going down. Yeah, Duncan going down back at the 26-yard line. And what they gained, they lost. Yeah, they, they lost it quite a bit and maybe even a yard more. Christmas was the first guy there for Grambling State University. The brother, but that line broke down like the Red Sea. Duncan uh, and two uh, jumping all over the place. I do not understand that. Good grief. Here's you a are, you, Offside against Grambling. You are a down lineman. Your head is over this football. There, It does not make any sense for you to jump off sides. Now, if you're wondering why it sounds like I'm griping, because I coach defensive linemen, and it is it is a sin before football gods for you to be over the ball and jump off sides. Not before the football gods. Well, it'll be first down, or third down, and make it six here. Ben, or I should say, Brandon Duncan looking to the sideline. Trip to the near side, one receiver far side. Duncan in the shotgun. Not a very good snap at all. Duncan back to pass. Oh, he is in major trouble. Throws it away as he was being hunted down by Tiger. You know, Duncan on the year, uh, his, uh, he's 164 of 257 coming into the game with just two interceptions. The problem that he has is that on the offensive line, they're really young. They've had some injuries. Duncan has had some problems trying to just get out of trouble, and the plays have not developed the way that he wanted to. He's third right now on the team in rushing. Well, the snap was off. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it looked like an end over end punt. And then it was floating in the air. He has to go get the ball and then try to make something happen. Chad Williams back to receive this punt. This is the second time in the game he's been back there. Uh, if you're wondering, Marquez <coughs> Carter is not playing for the Grambling Tigers today. No, he's not in the game for the Grambling Tigers, so Verlin Hunter and Chad Williams We'll share duties. We'll share the duties here today. And now we go back to offense for the Grambling State University Tigers. And we'll keep it right here. Professor Dick Harrison on the sideline. Prof, you had a chance to go in all kinds of places before the game started. And there's a lot of activities going on. He was early enough. It's just all over the place, Antoria. A crowd, I haven't seen a crowd like this at Robinson Stadium in forever. They're lined up at the top. They're lined up on the stairs. They're packed out on the home side. This is a great crowd, a great atmosphere for homecoming. First down and 10 for the Grambling Tigers. Kincaid hands it off to Justin Kelly across the 30 to the 33-yard line. And, and here's what you missed with Martez Carter. Of course, you got a receiver out of the backfield, great explosive runner, and, of course, a punt returner. But I tell you what, the Tigers haven't missed a beat so far. Swing pass out to Verlin Hunter across the 30, 35, 40, and gets out to the 45-yard line. That's a first down. Good job that time by the Grambling Tigers. Not running anything fancy, just a little swing out to Verlin Hunter. Had great blockers out in front of him. Chad Williams, one of those guys blocking for his compadre. Verlin Hunter on that last play did a very good job. Tigers pick up a big first down. Verlin Hunter coming into the game, 191 yards receiving with two touchdowns. Of course, we told you Chad Williams leading the team in rushing with 610 yards, averaging 122 a game. Here's a give to Justin Kelly, number two uh, rusher on the team coming into the contest today. He rushed the ball 53 times for 245 yards and four touchdowns. He's all running backs. I tell you what, Grambling has a little over 700 yards on the year running the football. And people don't talk about how well Grambling can run the ball. 
Christian K back to pass, looking deep, trying to find an open man, and it's incomplete. Verlin Hunter was the intended receiver on the far side, and that will bring up a third down and about seven yards to go. Yeah, that's one of those plays where they fake the inside give, use the zone read look or the option look off of the quarterback and try to use the wheel route. It didn't look like Verlin Hunter was sure if he was going to actually throw that ball or not, and didn't really... I want to say didn't want to put in any effort, but when he realized that it was going to be thrown to him, he had to kick it into a, a little extra gear. So that'll bring up a third down and seven yards to go here for the Grambling Tigers. 14 to nothing our score, 247 remaining in this first quarter of play. Kincaid with a snap Bradley movement. <laughs> Don't want that. I believe that's Dominique Leak. Super 8. A great interview by Leon Thomas with uh, Dominique Leak during the pregame show. If you missed it, you know, Leak has already graduated and is in grad school. And you talk about a young man who has done just some amazing things. He's looked at as a leader on this team, but also somebody <coughs> that uh, the coaches feel like has really grown in, not only to a great player, but as I said, a great leader. Well, he, he scored two touchdowns last week against uh, uh, Mississippi Valley. I mean, they were bombed type scores. Kincaid back to pass. Gets it complete. Out to Leak. Across the 50. Gets up across the, like the 45. <laughs> he may be about a yard shot. <laughs> and the punt team comes onto the field. Jonathan Wallace will come out. Wallace is actually doing very well this season punting the football away. Uh, Santoria He's averaging about 37 yards a kick, but, you know, more importantly, you know, he's taken over all of the kicking duties. And Coach Bob said on his show earlier this week, one of the major concerns that he has is that leg will start to wear down because he's doing all the kicking. He has three punts inside of the 50-yard line. Here's the punt. Nice low line drive kick in the Grambling's favor, and it will be down. Oh, oh goes into the end zone. They were trying to down the ball inside the five-yard line, and Wallace did a fantastic job of getting it right where they needed to. And they don't flip the field the way that the Tigers want to. I, I was meaning to say he has three 50-plus yard kicks this year, punting the football away. He has two that he's nailed inside of the 20. That would have been his third right there. And the coaches are just encouraging the special teams right there. Well, and it's one of those plays where if you're in that vicinity, you got to turn around and know where you are on the field and try to do your level best to make sure that you can down that football right at the one-yard line. Instead, Pine Bluff moves it out to the 20-yard line, which is not great field position, but it's better than where they would have been if they would have downed the ball at the end. Yeah, that would have been first down in Jesus. Here's the quarterback back to pass, looking screen pass. Nice screen set up by Pine Bluff. That's number 21, Willie Young, and he's all the way out to the 47-yard line. Got to know where Willie Young is. Grambling dialed up the blitz off of the backside that time. And because there was such a great job of being able to roll away from the pressure that time by Duncan, he was able to find Willie Young one-on-one -on -one out there and had two blockers in front of him, two-on-one in any, any given situation. Usually the offense wins that situation. Slot to the far side, one receiver to the near side. <coughs> Here's the quarterback, Brandon Duncan, swing pass out to the far side. And a gang tackle going on out there just past the midfield stripe as they are just <coughs> kind of attack the runner. They're trying to get everybody up here. Uh, Lauren Wilson uh, was the first guy there to make that tackle for Grambling State. But again, if you're Pine Bluff, I throw those type of passes the rest of the game. Yeah. I'm not looking to hold the ball in my hand all day long. Grambling blitz way too much for that. Here is the quarterback. Little pass right over the middle once again. This one going out across the 45. Yep. And it's going to be about a yard and a half shot of a first down. Notice what they're doing. Screen out wide to the wide receiver, screen underneath to the running back, and then come back and throw the middle screen to the running back underneath. Because, again, pressure coming. When Grambling is sitting that much pressure, they're getting in the backfield in the face, but they're leaving themselves exposed to those screen passes. And this is going to be a flag here. 
What's the huddle? Which twelve again? Yep. I, I might have thirteen. At times you may need it. <laughs> we were playing the other night against uh, <laughs> West Washita, and uh, two plays happened, Santoria, where we had ten guys on the field, and we tackled uh, West Washita for back-to-back -back losses on the play. Then they sent a guy on the field, right? I said, why are we going to send him out there? We just played well with 10 guys out there on the field. We don't <laughs> need to mess this up. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> First down and 10. I should say no, third, third down third, and third. seven, rather. They said, yeah, third and seven here. Slot to the far side. Or the near side. One receiver to the far side. Man in motion. Here's Brandon Duncan back to pass. Looking in incomplete over the head. 82 Paris Mack. I'll see that time. I tell you what, if Brandon Duncan gets that ball down a little bit, that's a first down. Yes, he's been a little high on most of his throws today. That's because he's throwing against his body, not really getting his shoulders back squared to the line of scrimmage where he can make an accurate throw. Pressure coming right up the middle of the field by Grambling State University, and they did a great job. Pretty decent pickup block that time that allowed Duncan to get out of that pocket and roll here to the near side. Fun time here for the Palm Bluff Golden Lions. Wow, that was, that was a good kick. It goes into the end zone, and the Tigers will come out to the 20. But I tell you what, you talk about a leg, number 42, Jamie Gillian has a heck of a leg. As a matter of fact, he's got a lot of punting, punting and kicking duties as well for Pond Bluff. He's got a 46-yard field goal that he made in, earlier in the year. Monty Coleman said that loves Gillian's leg, the consistency is the problem. Well, and that's what you want from a kicker, is somebody who can be consistent at all times throughout the course of the year. Here's the other thing. He's one of the best punters, in the, if not the best punter in the Southwestern Athletic Conference, averaging almost 40 yards a punt. And that was a pretty good indication right there of how strong his leg is. But when you talk about field goals, it is definitely about consistency. Absolutely. Chad Williams with the reception gets across the 20 to the 25. Well, maybe the 26-yard line. That should be the last play of the quarter. Yep, should be 14 to nothing our score. Looks like we will get ready to end the first quarter here. And that will be it. End of the first quarter with the score. Grambling State University Tigers 14. And Arkansas Pond Bluff nothing. We'll take this one-minute timeout. One minute. End of the first quarter break from Fairfield Inn and Aramark. One minute timeout. We'll be right back. Car Carnelia, I'm going to be texting you throughout the game just to see how we sound, and I'll send you any changes and updates by text, okay? I think I have your right, yeah, I think I got your right text number here. Coming down to you next, Prof. Welcome back here to Eddie G. Robinson Memorial Stadium here on the campus of Grambling State University. It is now second down and four here for the Grambling Tigers. They're on top 14 to nothing here at Eddie G. Robinson Stadium's homecoming. Berlin Hunter with the catch. Gets out to about the 30-yard line, and that might be enough for a Tiger first down. Depending on if it's a left foot or a right foot spot, Santoria. Quick, annou quick announcement for you. A win for your team is a win for you, too. There's nothing quite like it except driving a Nissan. Go to Nissan, a proud supporter of Grambling State University Athletics, and shop ChooseNissan.com today. Take on game day. Third down and inches for the Grambling Tigers. They'll go with a double stack formation, two on each side. And I'm sure the defense looking for Chad Williams. And here's a give to John to uh, 
to Justin Kelly, and he gets across the 30 to about the 33-yard line, and that's going to be enough for a Tiger first down. And that's what happens when you're on defense. You're so you're paying attention so much to those receivers that you spread out your defense, and there's no help there in the middle of the line in order to, to get a guy like Justin Kelly down. And when you weigh 240 pounds, you better bring your uh, hard hat and your lunch pail to bring him down. First down and 10 now for the Grambling State University Tigers. Screen. Screen pass out to Chad Williams. Goes across the 35 to the 40. Still on his feet. 50. Wow. Picks up a tackler and gets all the way into Pondluck territory at the 42-yard line. First he down. He is just amazing. Great job that time by Chad Williams. Catches a little quick screen. And it's those yak yards that are, are rack yards. Run after the catch. That's so important when he's in the ball game. He does a great job of staying behind his blockers, and then he was able to accelerate and pick up real big yardage that time for the Grambling State University the Tigers. One more step, I think you'd have been able to break that thing. Chad Williams, four catches, 56 yards last week. Runs over tacklers and gets all the way to the 25-yard line. He just bulldozed over defensive players. Out that time by Justin Kelly. Another Grambling first down. Tigers dressed in all black. And it's a blackout here at Grambling State University. Trips to the far side, one receiver near side. Here's a swing pass to Verlin Hunter, across the 20, still on his feet. He's running over tacklers, gets down inside the 15 to the 11 yard line. And just want to uh, let everybody know at home, not only can you listen to the game here on the Grambling Sports Radio Network, but you can also watch the game and hear the broadcast on the YouTube channel sponsored by the Grambling State University Television Center. Go to the website, www.gram.edu, and go to the bottom of the page and click on the link to watch the game live. And all kinds of movement wow. going on. Good Lord. <laughs> Number 92 for Arkansas Pond Bluff. Ryan Williams ran over one of the defensive linemen, but ultimately it's going to be a false start against Grambling. Yeah, he ran over, uh, must have been Trey Goins, not Trey Goins. I'm trying to see. That would have been, uh, what's that, William Waddell he ran over? 74. Four, 75. Uh, 75, yeah. sorry, yeah. William Waddell. Yep. Well, he hammered him, too. Here's Kincaid. He'll keep the ball. Go up the middle of the field. 15-10 as he bounces outside. Still on his feet to the five, and he goes out of bounds at the five-yard line. First down, Tigers. Good job that time by hand, Renee Kincaid. He puts the ball in the belly of that running back. He rolled him until the last second. Saw that he had a hole right off of the right side, and he darts right off of the right side of that offensive line, and he comes up just two yards short of another Grambling Tiger first down. Yep, second down and three for the Grambling Tigers. 12-21 remaining in this first half of action. 14 to nothing is our score. I'd run him again. Slot to the near side, one receiver to the far side. Here's the throw, catch, oh, touchdown, Grambling State University. That's number 83, Jordan Jones. Can't make it any easier than that. Jordan Jones did an outstanding job once again, finding himself in the end zone wide open. The fake underneath held those linebackers long enough for Jones to be able to just to release off the line of scrimmage and turn around in the end zone. And as soon as he releases the turn around, the ball was in his hands. Great job by Grambling State University finding that offensive rhythm to start the third quarter. So with 12.08 remaining here until halftime, the Grambling Tigers are up 21 to nothing here on, Ar here on Arkansas Pond Bluff. We'll take this one minute timeout. One minute, you're listening to Grambling Football right here on the Grambling Sports Radio Network.
Welcome back to Robinson Stadium here on the campus of Rambling State University. 12.08 remaining here in the second quarter. Rambling on top of Pine Bluff, 21 to nothing. Jonathan Wallace has the ball set up on the tee and ready to go. Beautiful day here in God's country in North Louisiana. Here is the end over end kick. Kicking, kick down to about the five yard line. It'll be across the 10 to about the 14 yard line. Pretty decent job that time by the return man, Peterson for Arkansas Pine Bluff. And penalty markers will come in after the play is over with. Probably an unsportsmanlike as the officials were looking at the Pine Bluff side. 12.02 remaining in the second quarter. Austin Clark, Santoria Black. Santoria Black will be back in just a moment. Had to step away to take care of some other duties. Unsportsmanlike against Arkansas Pine Bluff. That will take them from the 14-yard line, half the distance, which will be right at the six and a half, seven-yard line. So Pine Bluff will start first down and 10 at their seven and a half-yard line. 21 to nothing, Grambling on top. Tigers and Grambling four and one overall, four and zero oh in the conference. Pine Bluff will come out with a twin set to the far side, two backs in the backfield. Shotgun formation. Peterson will go in motion. Duncan in trouble. Pressure coming. Duncan steps up. Pass is going to be in and out of the hands of the intended wide receiver who just took his eyes off of that football to Sean Williams. So to bring up a second down and call it 10. Pine Bluff at the seven yard line with 11.55 left to go here in the second quarter of play. We have to pray for our friend Tim Stubbs from Pine Bluff Radio. It's a major issues for him. He's been really? doing the broadcast for 16 years and uh, just informed us that uh, he's trying to get the broadcast on still. Lots of issues going on. Wow. So okay. trying, to find, trying to lend a hand to make sure everything is okay. Here on second down and 10, pass out to 10-yard line, and that's going to be Willie Young, if I'm not mistaken, gets to about the 12-yard line. And he's one of those guys that's an explosive player. And you know what? As young as Pond Bluff is, and they do have their, their issues, there's no question about that. Brandon Duncan, we know, is a pretty talented quarterback. Willie Young, very talented. I wouldn't doubt it if he made first or second team all-conference. You mentioned two young guys. It starts up front. You have yeah. two guys on the offensive line that are freshmen. Freshman, yeah, they're freshmen. They're freshmen. Fresh. Yeah. You know, and that, and that doesn't spell, you know, well for you this year, but in the weeks and years and months to come, it should do you much better. And you're right, Willie Young is just an amazing football player. Wrap around drum. And here's the running back, and it's going to be 35, Keyshawn Williams on the carry, and he gets out beyond the 30-yard line, and that's enough for a Tiger first down. This, those are the types of plays that you have to run against the team, like Rambling, that love to send a lot of pressure at you. That time, Rambling did a lot of pressure. Two men off of the edge, open up the middle of the field, give a lot of credit to the Pine Bluff offensive line. The left guard, uh, right guard, right tackle, did an amazing job of turning everybody out on that last play. 21 0 is still our score, first and 10 for Pine Bluff. Duncan dropping, Duncan looking pass is going to be complete to, is that Willie Young? Yes, it is. Willie Young will complete the pass to, uh, excuse me, Duncan the Young, pass complete all the way up to the 42 yard line. Lots of activity going on around campus today. The governor and first lady of Louisiana uh, joining us here for homecoming today. They're so in the box. To have yes, had a chance to be on the field uh, during the pregame. Terrence Bradford always has me doing operation stuff. You ought to tell Terrence that you don't get paid enough. Well, that's that's my brother. I know. Number six, Patrick and Rowland. friends don't let friends drive trucks. <laughs> 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 yeah, Terrence says, hey, hey bruh. He calls me bruh. Hey, bruh, I need you on the field, man. Can you help? Sure. Come on down there. Terrence, a good friend of the network. Has Looking out for us. Oh, yeah. Talk about an advocate. He's one. Inside slot on the near side is Willie Young. And if you're looking at TV, you no, know, it's not going to be two men in motion, but now there is a flag, though. Yeah, now it is. 
I mean, false start against Pond Bluff. <coughs> okay, originally, I know people who are watching this broadcast on GSU TV through YouTube uh, know that was not too many in motion to start, but that's the way it ended. Right. Somebody flinched just a little bit. See, you can shift guys around. Mm -hmm. You can shift. As long as there is, is the, the, the shift takes place uh, simultaneously, you're good. It's when you shift and then another guy shifts at the same time. Somebody want to call a timeout? Yeah, Pine Bluff will call a timeout here with 9.27 remaining in this first half of play. So we'll take a timeout as well. 9.27 left in the first half of play. We will take this one-minute timeout. You're listening to Grambling Football on the Grambling Sports Radio Network. When you come back here, you ought to be ready for the top of the hour. All right. Getting pretty close. It'll be, 12, it'll be 258, I think. Oh, no, 257. So it'll be a play or two in between. Carnelia, when we come back, we're going to send it back to you uh, eventually for the top of the hour. The cart number is GSUID. It's at the top of your log on the first page. We only got two carts in in that first yeah, quarter. Yeah, way behind. Let's go back to the old days. Look at all those people saying. That's what I was looking at. Everybody trying to sit in that shade line. Boy, it reminds me of family reunion. <clears throat> First down in, I should say second down and about, call it 18 here for Pond Love. Double slot formation. Brandon Duncan in the shotgun. Duncan looking, trying to find an open receiver. Duncan escaping, and he's down at the 35-yard line. Donovan McCray is going to get a lot of credit because you notice what they did with Donovan McCray. They didn't send him on the pass rush that time. They kept him at the line of scrimmage. He's the guy that's spying the quarterback on that play. So in case the pressure gets too far up the field, he's the next line of defense. Did a great job of hustling down the line and able to Calls Brandon to get tripped up. And it's going to be another timeout here. <clears throat> and defensive coordinator Everett Todd is just furious. As a matter of fact, he uh, tells one of his players to have a seat for a minute, Samuel Reese. Yeah, it's not going to be good because Coach Fobbs is all over him right he now. He sure is. Reese looked at as one of the leaders of this team. And now his teammates are just getting after him, just telling him to calm down. And Coach Nard now, I believe, is having a few words with him. <clears throat> and for Reese, you know, sometimes you got coaches, even though they may not be your position coaches, but you have a good relationship with a good rapport. Kendrick Nord has a pretty good rapport with Samuel Reese and just kind of telling him to calm down and just kind of get himself together here. Yeah, and sometimes you can be so amped up about something, not realizing uh, that it is the coach's responsibility to get get the best out of it. You know, you may not like the way he his method, but at the end of the day, it's his job on the line. That's right. Here is the the uh, toss out to the running back out to about the 35 yard line, which is about the line of scrimmage. They call it, call it 36. Yeah, that's the original line of scrimmage. Yeah. Good job that time by Grambling State. Got a punt coming up here. As soon as this punt is over, we'll pause 10 seconds for station identification here. Again, GSUID is the cart number. GSUID. Punt coming up here for Arkansas Pond Bluff. The guy that made that last tackle for Grambling was Deontay Haddock. Normally that's Malcolm Williams in the middle for Grambling State. We've seen a couple of different guys play today. We've seen Christmas and Haddock. And all kinds of problems. And this time I think this is a, uh, wow, look at that kick. Yeah, I was just about to say, it's a pretty good kick right there. Wow. We, we, when I thought about it after saying it, Christmas and Hatter, it kind of made me think of a Dr. Seuss book. Yeah. Still fourth down, they'll back up right here. Gillen is averaging over 40 yards a punt, I might add. And, uh, you know, one of the things I was down on the field, 
uh, before the game, and this is just before some of the pregame activities started uh, here at the stadium with homecoming. And uh, Gillen, a tremendous kicker, and one of the officials told him, he said, you know, hey, look, you got to put your hip pads and a butt pad on. Yeah, he most, said, most yeah. kickers don't like to wear those. And here's a kick, and they're going to throw the flag here. It's going to be running into the kicker. And I think there was a little acting going on. The ball goes yeah. down to about the 23-yard line, but they'll get a five-yard five yarder out of this one. Yeah. I don't like that call. That's, that's like one of the worst calls in football. Oh, they're going to call it roughing and not running into the kicker. That's a first down. That, that, that's the most bogus call in all the football yep. to me. Now, if a guy leaves his feet, and he's extended this way in front of the opponent's foot, and he makes contact with him. That's not enough to me to call an unsportsmanlike penalty against anybody. That's different if he punt the ball and the ball's gone away, <clears throat> and then he just kills him in the backfield. I mean, that was a little acting job. He, that, a little, that was little, awful. That was a little Vlade Divac going on. Yeah, that, yeah, boy, I tell you what. You know, some days you wonder why officials make certain calls in games, but I mean, you have to because that's the rule, but it's a weak call. Now, then there was a little scuffle at the very end. Donovan McCray exchanging a few words with the guys from Pine Bluff. Just saying hello, how you doing? Glad to see you here today. Um, maybe something. Let me hear his offsides for grandma. First down, three receivers set. Brandon Duncan throws this one over to the uh, sideline. <coughs> Brings up second down. Proper place to throw that one because the screen was not set up at all. No. Let's see what they're going to say right here. They're going against Bramley, yes. Offsides against Bramley. It's because the defensive end. Bramley State University was lined up in the neutral zone. Mm -hmm. I saw it from here. Yeah, that was Brandon Barner. Oh, bad snap that time for Duncan, and he was able to recover. Come. Yes, sir. It, it was above his head. He did a good job just to get his hands on it, but still a loss of about three yards on the plate. Only one or nothing, our score of Rambling are still on top. Pine Bluff not moving in the right direction. People have to remember, they were only trailing by 11 points last week in Southern. Here is Duncan, he hands off. And Tim this time, Montgomery. yep, it's to Montgomery. And he gets across the 45 to about the 46, 47. Sorry, Terry Montgomery. I don't know. I heard running back. Pine Bluff, one of the spokesmen as well for the Golden Lions. That'll well, bring up the first down, or I should say third. Uh, third down, rather. Three yard gain there. <clears throat> Three receivers set still for Pine Bluff. Duncan across the 45, and he's down at midfield. Good job that time by Grambling State. That's Donovan McCray doing a great job. He worked up the field, up the field, up the field for the defensive end spot. Then he recovers. As soon as he sees him step up in the pocket, he breaks away from the offensive lineman, and then he runs to the quarterback, uh, Duncan, down, tackles him before he was able to get big yardage on that play. I was looking at one of the coaches talking to the secondary after that play and one of the things it looked like that he was telling the guy from the secondary is that just be careful of where your placement is as the receivers are coming down the field. Alignments and assignments. And this is a good kick by Gillen. Yes it is. Picked up off the ground by Hunter at the 15 20. He's got a 30, 40 45 and nearly runs over the kicker Gillen. The mighty. One Gillen. man kept him from scoring a touchdown right there. And it was a punter. Gillen. Not the punter. The punter made the tackle. Punter I'm talking tackle. about. I'm talking about the guy from Grambling who's standing around and standing going to put a hat on the doggone punter that would allow that to be a touchdown. Yeah, well, Gillen is going to be credited with the tackle, so he'll be a hero in the stat line. 
Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to the Grambling Sports Radio Network. Welcome back here to Eddie G. Robinson Stadium, Santoria Black, along with Ossie Clark, Professor Nick Harrison, Chassie Livingston, Jair Payne here at uh, the stadium. And uh, I, I wanted to ask Professor something. You know, down on the field, there's been a lot of energy coming from the defensive side of the football, especially with the coaches there, Prof. Absolutely. The coaches are into it just like the players are as well. It's almost as if they want to put on pads and get on the field, especially Everett Todd. He has been up and down this sideline all game long. Verlin Hunter gets a good catch, and he does a great job after the catch because he went out there, he got the ball, and then kind of hooked around back to the inside, well, and he got some yardage. That's what you teach your wide receivers, is that once you catch the football, turn up the field and get positive yards. And Verlin Hunter was able to do that, picked up the first down. Trips to the near side, one receiver far side. Here is the pass, wide out to the wide Dominique receiver, Lee. Dominique Lee, touchdown. Oh, that. No, I'm sorry. Is that Leak? That's Brooks. That, I don't know. You're right. That was Dominic Leak. Yeah, Dominic Leak with the touchdown. Wide open. Devontae Kincaid gets to Dominic Leak, his third touchdown in That's two it. games. Yeah, third for him, fourth of the game yeah. for Kincaid. Four touchdowns for Devontae Kincaid. Wow. And the score is now 27 to nothing, rambling on top with 522 remaining here in this first half of play. My, oh my. Kick is up and it's good. Time out on the field with the score. Grambling 28, Pond Bluff nothing. We'll take this one minute timeout. One minute, we'll be right back. Okay, so two It's electric on the sideline, man. You can feel it. Uh, let's see, Leak. What was that? Forty yards. Where's the ball? At? I don't remember the play for the ball. Had to be over forty. Third break. It, yep. Is it? Mm -hmm. It took one at 249, 256, and then 307. Should have been the red the gallon Welcome back here to Eddie G. Robinson Stadium. Here comes the return man from Arkansas Pond Bluff, and he gets all the way out to about the 22 yard line. just cannot find a breaking point in today's game. All right, coming up local stations, we're at uh, break number 208. Halftime coming up, the Nissan Halftime Report. Mark Newman, new Vice President for Advancement at Grambling State University, scheduled to be our special guest, as well as David Aubrey, who is a uh, with communications and public affairs with AT&T, also uh, doing some great work for the Grand Lake State University family. Here is Duncan back to pass, and he gets it out to the receiver. That's number 33, Terry Montgomery, and he gets out beyond the 25 to about the 27, 28-yard line. Cooper was the guy that was there. When he got there, he was there with cruel intention, Santoria. Put a hit on Montgomery on the little screen play. Here's the thing. Grambling has been off base because of all of the screens that they've been able to see. But most, of, most importantly at this point, they've been able to recover and make tackles after those plays have developed. Second and six. Picked off by Arkes Cooper at the 25. 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Grambling. Wow. Cooper, the Johnny on the spot, did exactly what he was supposed to do. Was rushing up the field, off of the tackle spot, 
throws up both of his hands, was able to get those big mitts on him, and once he did, he was able to secure them in his hands like a tight end, and he took it down the sideline for a Grambling Tiger touchdown. Tigers have scored on defense over uh, the last couple of ball games, Santoria. Was that 23 yards, I believe, of 20, 25 yards, I believe, on the return. Wow. And it's now 34 to nothing. Grambling on top. And now make it 35 to nothing. We'll take this one minute timeout, one minute with the score. The Grambling Tigers, 35. Arkansas Palm Bluff, nothing. We'll take this one minute timeout. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back to Robinson Stadium. Here is the return by the Pine Bluff Golden Lions. That ball returned by Peterson to the Pine Bluff 29 yard line. 35 to nothing. Our score with 431 remaining here in the second quarter of play. Rambling scoring on an interception returned by Arquez Cooper. Cooper had just made a tackle prior to the interception. Here's the first and 10. Trips look to the near side, one back in the backfield. Three-step drop pass is gonna be incomplete, intended for the wide receiver out in the flat area, Eric Thompson. Second down and 10 for Pine Bluff when play resumes. 427 remaining here in the second quarter. Rambling with a commanding lead. Santoria Black will be back in just a few moments. Here's the second down and 10 play to Thompson who is hit with cruel intentions again. Outstanding job by Grambling State's Jamil Jackson. Can't say enough about how well Jackson has played for the Grambling Tigers this year. Jamil Jackson has been one of those shining stars on the defensive side of the ball, and when he gets a full head of steam, watch out. Uh, you know, the, the Grambling defense is eighth in the country, right? Wow, and that's one of the reasons why Samuel Reese, after getting chewed on the sideline, chews up the offensive line for Pine Bluff and makes a huge tackle in the backfield. Yeah, that time the running back didn't have anywhere to go. Keyshawn Williams was wrapped up immediately on the give that time. Samuel Reese stepped up and made a tremendous play. Rambling one of the best, is the best rush uh, defending team in the conference. They only give up a little over 100 yards a game and only about 3.2 yards a carry. Only four times has anybody scored on the ground against Grambling this year. Eighth in the country in red zone defense, only allowing eight touchdowns and 12 opponent red zone attempts as well. Talk about it. the Iron Curtain. Again, one of the best defenses in the Southwestern Athletic Conference in total defense, and I believe it was a timeout by Pine Bluff. Timeout, Pine Bluff, uh, and we'll keep it right here. And so while we keep it right here, uh, we've got a lot of things going coming up at halftime. Of course, Professor Nick Harrison will be having an interview down on the sideline here for homecoming. Uh, of course, uh, we're expected to have Mark Newman, new vice president for uh, advancement, joining us here at halftime. The uh, court will be announced here, and I uh, do want to mention a couple of things. The uh, Monroe Washita chapter of the Grambling University National Alumni Association presented a check to the athletic department in the amount of $6,000 during the pregame festivities. 
Uh, in the last several years, the chapter has raised over $46,000 wow. to help support GSU Athletics. And so you talk about a chapter that's putting their money where its mouth is, 46 grand over the last several years. And also, uh, they announced a new partnership between Nissan IMG uh, College 100 program and Grambling. It's a three-year partnership between Nissan IMG College and Grambling State University. And uh, that money will go to help Grambling Athletics. That was a presentation as well. And then, of course, they honored the GSU men's cross-country team winning the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Uh, the meet, which was held in Clinton, Mississippi. And, of course, Bertrand Lavelle, Coach of the Year in cross country. Here's the kick by Gillen. Comes down to Chad Williams at the 25. Puts on a couple of moves, stays on his feet, and finally brought down at about the 25, 27-yard line. It'll be first down and 10 at that point. Also, we want to mention the Red River Gala. Uh, that'll be coming up November the 11th from 7 to 9 p.m. at Samstown. An hotel in Shreveport, music provided by the Shreveport Bolger Jazz Ensemble. The evening will also include a silent act, auction, and cash bar. For more information, you can call 318-596-1020. Kind of had to wonder there for a second. You kind of emphasized that cash bar. Oh, yeah. I got a little excited there. I'm sorry. Hey, easy killer. I'm just, I'm just announcing that it's a cash bar. It's, it's easy. easy. <laughs> Timeout, 3.02 left to go in the second quarter of play. Rambling will take this timeout. Nick, one of the things that you can definitely say is that the atmosphere here at homecoming has been second to none. And it is an amazing uh, day here in, at Robinson Stadium, but an amazing day here in Grambling, Louisiana. I don't know what happened to the professor. I thought he was going to jump on that time. Get with him in just a moment. 35 to nothing is our score. Rambling still on top. Tigers will have the football. First down and 10 at the Grambling 29-yard line. Look who's falling into the gig with us on today. None other than Governor John Bell Edwards. So nice to have you with us on today. First and ten, rambling, looking, pass going deep down the field. Complete. Dominique Leak, who's going to walk into the end zone. Touchdown. Got to say, I see life is great at Super 8. Yes, it is. Wonderful job that time by... Rambling State University, Dominic Leak scores 71 yards on that touchdown. Joining us in the broadcast booth is the governor of the state of Louisiana, none other than John Bell Edwards. So nice to have you, Mr. Governor. Well, thank you. What a beautiful day to watch a football game, and Grambling homecoming is just killing it right now. Absolutely, and I think that from now on, you're going to have to start coming to every football <laughs> game because you have brought some kind of luck here to Grambling State University. Well, they've got a great football team, and I know the coach was just uh, extended in his contract, and, and for good reason. Absolutely. Governor, one of the things that you can definitely talk about is the planning agenda for mm. colleges across this country, especially HBCUs like Southern University and Grambling State University. How uh, are things looking for these two colleges uh, in the state of Louisiana? Well, I, I'm optimistic uh, about the future of higher education in Louisiana, and that certainly includes HBCUs for me. Um, you know, we had a $2 billion budget deficit when I came in office for the current fiscal year, the biggest in our history. And uh, we had three sessions of the legislature. At the end of the day, we were able to stabilize funding for higher education, uh, and I'm very, very proud of that. We're going to do better in the future. But right here at Grambling, enrollment is up 7%. They've got 70% increase in people expressing interest in coming in the future. And I know that under the leadership of President Rick Gallo uh, and the other people in the family here at Grambling, that this university is going to excel, and, and Southern will as well. Grambling State University, extra point is good. Jonathan Wallace has the ball set up and teed up and ready to go as kickoff end over end is going to be taken by Pine Bluff right at about the 10-yard line across the 15 to the 20-yard line. That's where a host of Tigers will bring him down. Talking about 
President Rick Gallo is a guy that you've known for a very long time, Mr. Governor, and what a wonderful job he's been able to do. Come in and recommit himself to Grambling State University and also help to change the culture here. Well, I think that's right. I've known him for over a decade. He is a, he is a great leader. I knew that. Uh, I'm very proud of the, of the job he's already doing here. And I look forward to him being here at the university for a long time to come. You know, it's been a long time, I think, since we had a native, someone with a vested interest in Grambling, uh, to be at the helm. And uh, a young, dynamic leader like Rick Gallo, he can be here for a long time, I believe. I definitely would love to see Mr. Gallo stay here at Grambling State University, former U.S. Senator himself, so he knows the ins and outs and workings uh, of the political arena as well as being a great lawyer himself. <laughs> so he, he, he knows how to work himself into the right positions well, and work things for Grambling State. Well, trust me, he is working it pretty hard because uh, <laughs> I've been here with him today, but I've been on the phone with him. I get letters from him. Uh, uh, he, he knows how to move the levers of power in Baton Rouge in order to bring resources to Grambling. And, and they are needed, and I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to working with him. 90 years of football, 90 years of the band. Uh, congratulations to Grambling State University. And I'll tell you, I was at Southern last week. They are excited about the game in the Dome coming up. I can just imagine both teams at this particular point playing lights out. First down and 10. Pass is going to be complete to the middle of the football field, to the Grambling 35-yard line. That pass is complete to Cody Swan, who picks up a, a Pine Bluff first down, 42 to nothing our score. Talking about Grambling and Southern University, I hope to see you there. I will be there. I will make the rounds, and we'll come get on the radio. I tell you what, you got to wear your Grambling jacket. I will, I will, okay, I'll do. You're going to get me in trouble. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Thank Governor, you so for much. coming and visiting. God Good bless you and everybody listening today. 42 to nothing, our score. Grambling on top of Arkansas Pine Bluff. First down and 10 for Arkansas Pine Bluff with a pass completed across the middle of the football field. Always great to have the governor of the state come by and visit with you and invest his interest here at Grambling State University. He and President Rick Gallo have known each other for a very long time, worked with each other for a very long time, makes for a beautiful friendship for Grambling State University and HBCUs across this country, especially here in the state of Louisiana. First down and 10 for Pine Bluff. Double-double formation, now trips, pressure coming. Duncan will lose the pressure. He'll tuck it. He'll run it. He'll pick up the first down for Pine Bluff at the Grambling 25-yard line. Good job that time. 55 and counting for Arkansas Pine Bluff and 155 and counting for the quarter to come to a close. 42 to nothing. Grambling on top of Pine Bluff. See if the Tigers can hold. Officials blow their whistles to stop play. Ninety seconds remaining here in the second quarter of play. Santoria Black joins us. Always fun to have the governor around. Absolutely, uh, Jonathan Williams coming up at halftime as well. So we've got David Aubrey, new VP of Advancement, Mark Newman, Jonathan Williams, stats scores, man. All we need now, you know, is a is a good good stop here on defense to put the icing on the cake. Yeah, for this first half, and these two minutes left, here's Duncan. Nice job on defense there, and that was a number 33, Jamil Jackson, kind of breaking up that pass there. Uh, something I just kind of noticed down on the field, and. Uh, Prof, I'm looking at uh, Terrence Graves, assistant coach down there, special teams and linebackers. He's really fired up. Oh, man, these coaches have been uh, yelling at these players as if the score was reversed and it was UAPB of 42 to nothing. No matter what the score is, they keep the intensity and the pressure on that team, and it makes them do some great things, although there is a penalty right there. Yep, there's a uh, pass down the field. It's going to be a flag back at about the 20-yard line. It's going to be offsides on the defense, and so that'll give – Pine Bluff five more yards, and Coach Graves getting is on the field. Yeah, he's going to get Samuel Reese out the game. You know, Reese is uh, not, you know, it, it's something that uh, I think uh, Coach Fobbs told me, and they called him, I think, Charlie. 
they call him Charlie because he's like a, another person out there on the football field. Mm. And so they say, look, as long as you're doing what we got to do, I'll call you Charlie on game day. I think it's something like that. But uh, he mentioned that during his coach's show uh, this week. Trips formation to the near side, slide to the far side. Bramley has to do a better job in their blitz, though, staying in their lanes and making sure that they don't put themselves in harm's way where Duncan can run. Here's a snap to Duncan. He's looking back to his left, complete. And it's going to be short of a first down here. It's going to be third down and just short. Yeah, they're moving with with a little bit of speed right now, a little bit of quickness. Paris Mack on the catch for the Grambling State for Arkansas Pond Bluff. Third down and calling short, maybe a yard. Yep, at the maybe most. Still 118 remaining here in this first half of play. Man in motion for Arkansas Pond Bluff. Duncan looking back to his right, complete. And that's gonna be out to number 15, John Hawkins, and because they're gonna call him down. Yeah, he was, he was sitting on the, you know, uh, lower end of his body on the ground. Or as my cousin would say, because he has a, uh, a degree in science, you know, the posterior of your biological anatomy. Yeah, so he was definitely down. And all kinds of activities going on down the sideline. You've got alumni cheerleaders. The alumni band will perform wow. on the sideline. Cool day. Oh, yeah. Here's Duncan, back to pass, looking, trying to go for the corner. It's going to be incomplete. That's good coverage right yeah. there. Yeah, no one was open. Pouncey did a great job of covering the wide receiver step for step on that last play, and it was nowhere for Hawkins to go at all. I mean, he was blanket coverage. A little bit more, he looked like he was a part of the Pine Bluff jersey. I'm going to get called to uh, kind of guess, or I should say to – Estimate the attendance scientifically after the after the game, and I'm, I'm, this is well over. I would say 16,000, 17,000. Easy. And we've got a stoppage of play, and I think this is going to be a timeout. <coughs> Forty-five seconds remaining until halftime. The Grambling or Pine Bluff? Pine, Pine Bluff. Bluff. Yeah, Pine, Pine Bluff. Bluff will take a timeout. So we'll keep it right here. Kind of go over a few more announcements here as we have a ton of them. Don't forget Miss Bramley and her court will be announced here at halftime. Don't forget about Nissan. Take on game day Nissan, a proud supporter of Bramley State University Athletics. Shop, choose Nissan today. Innovation that excites. 10 for 10, have you accepted that 10 for 10 challenge? Accept the challenge today by making a donation of $10 or more and challenge 10 friends to do the same. How about you take out your phone right now? Do it right now. And you can text 10, the, le the word 10 for 10. Text that, 10 for 10. The words 10 for 10 to Vaan0155 and give today via text. Let's go, Grand Fam, and let's support our university like never before through the 10 for 10 challenge campaign. And let's see, uh, also, Bayou Classic tickets are on sale. Oh, yeah, just a little note here. Uh, when you come out to the stadium, Bayou Classic tickets on sale Monday through Friday until 4 p.m. Monday through Thursday until 4 p.m. Friday from 7.30 until 11.30 a.m. And this pass is complete at the one yard line. Yes. <coughs> if, if anything, the receiver has to be very careful on that last play and that was uh, Cody Swan, uh, Santoria Swan. He has to be very careful because if he thinks it's a touchdown and the official said that it was a completed pass, he fumbled it before he crossed it, the plane. That's right. And that ball would have been a touchback and it would have gone to ground. So it's first down and goal, third down and goal, I should say, at the one yard line. It should be first and goal, should it? Here is Duncan looking back to his, wow, he hits Time the dust. Time is expired here in the first half. And Coach Robert Fobbs getting his team out into the locker room. And that'll do it for the end of the first half with the score. The Grambling Tigers, 42, and Palm Bluff nothing. We'll take this one minute timeout. One minute, you're listening to the Grambling Sports Radio Network.
Oh, you're going to come here and put this headset on right here, sir? You'll keep the pass, right? Yeah. Welcome back here to Eddie G. Robinson Memorial Stadium here on the campus of Grambling State University where the Tigers are on top of the Arkansas Pond Bluff Golden Lions in dominating fashion, 42 to nothing. Joining me now here in the press box on the Nissan Halftime Report is David Aubrey, who of course uh, has been helping the university in tremendous ways. Also, it was communications and public affairs with AT&T. David, thank you for joining us here on the Halftime Report. Hey, thank you, Centauri. I appreciate the opportunity to come and share some of the good news and things happening at Grambling. Absolutely. First of all, I want to talk about the Red River Classic, and that's because with all the people here, and I know people were out in the tailgate section say they're going to listen to the ball game and all the things that are going on, the Red River Classic is coming up between Grambling and Alabama State the weekend of November the 12th, and there's a lot of activities that are going on. Absolutely. Two weeks from today in Shreveport, Louisiana, we'll be hosting the, the Red River State Fair Classic. Uh, it is a, a showcase that Grambling has, for the last six years, been bringing one of their home games uh, to Shreveport at Independence Stadium, which also serves as one of our home uh, stadiums. Uh, Alabama State, we're going to have fun. We're going to come in at Friday night with a, a social, and then we're going to have a, a fundraising gala for the university. We have a goal, and we're more than halfway there to raising $200,000 to support uh, scholarships and other needed activities for the university. We're also on Saturday uh, with Nissan at the Or Nissan dealer on Benton Road in Bossier City. Uh, we're going to be having a little fun fest. Uh, President Gallo, uh, some of the uh, student leaders and are going to come out, and we're going to be certainly working and, and promoting Nissan over there in uh, Shreveport, Bossier. But the fair will open uh, up at 10 o'clock. Your game ticket, all you got to do is just show them. You get free admission to the state fair uh, just by showing your game ticket. Uh, we're going to have the game. The kickoff starts at, uh, at 2 o'clock, same as homecoming today. And it's going to be fun. Uh, a lot of other unique things that we're going to try to add to make the game day experience great. And we're going to culminate with a partnership uh, with the, uh, the local alumni chapter, the Shreveport alumni chapter at El Dorado Casino. We're going to have a post party featuring DJ Phil, which uh, you ought to know, yeah. St. from back sure. during our day. We're going to have a great time downtown in the Red River District and in the El Dorado in that ballroom there. So it's going to be a fun weekend, and we certainly want to invite all our listeners to come to Shreveport, Louisiana. Absolutely. I plan on being here. I haven't seen Phil in a long time. We'll talk to him on social media. But uh, he's doing big things over in the Dallas area with him and Bay Bay and the whole crew over Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Um, let's talk now about uh, athletics and look at that athletic uh, athletic director search. And you know, there's been a lot of scrutiny behind uh, that athletic director's position over the last several years. And I think that now, when you look at the, I guess you can say, the solidified state of the university at the president's position, it will, he was President Gallo is now able to say, let's now go out and, as he said, we want a superstar as the athletic director. You have the charge of leading that committee. Yes. Uh, this is the second committee since President Gallo has come on board. Uh, I chaired the search committee for the vice president for advancement, and you'll be talking to Mr. Newman shortly. But uh, the athletic director said we have a dynamic committee of, I mean, all Americans. I mean, it's well represented with students, alumni and all. Uh, we had 24 applicants to apply for that position. Uh, we're going to have interviews, I think, from six to eight of the candidates this week. Uh, but we're going to keep this search committee going until we find, as he called, the superstar. Grambling deserves it. Uh, the alum deserves it. The students, uh, student leaders deserve it. And we recognize our brand. It's not even a state brand. It's not a national brand. It's an international brand. And Grambling deserves uh, it's, it's so important in athletics to our history and to our present. It's so important for us to have a leader in athletics that serve at the cabinet level that's going to support President Gallo and this university that we can gainfully get these resources uh, so that we can close our fiscal gaps and, and certainly make some upgrades to these facilities so that our student athletes can have a wonderful experience. Last thing, uh, you mentioned this and you served on the Vice President of Advancement Search Committee. We'll talk to Mr. Newman here in just a second. And for people who don't understand how critical this position is, it's basically the lifeblood in talking to the business community, not just in North Louisiana, but nationally and internationally, and fostering those relationships that will help keep the university viable. Absolutely. We have a, a dynamic president with a lot of energy, uh, but we've got to set the systems in place and put in before corporations as well as alums and other 
uh, philanthropic groups who want to share their resources with Grambling State University. And the Advancement Vice President is certainly charged with uh, putting an organization and putting systems in place so that when donors give money, we receive it rightly, we account for it, and we make sure it's spent appropriately. Uh, and, and, and Mr. Newman brings a number of relationships on the corporate level and the national level, uh, certainly beyond the Grambling and the Louisiana region. So I was very proud uh, that President Gallo was able to negotiate a package to get Mr. Newman to come on board and help us. And we really believe he's going to do an outstanding job to help us here. And I just want to mention this for our fans at home who may not know, but Grambling produces great leaders. David, go from SGA president <laughs> to a corporate, one of the corporate leaders for AT&T in this area, sitting on such committees. That's truly giving back, and I want to thank you for all well, that you do. Well, Senator, what's very important, and I do work for AT&T, and I'm proud, but when I took my job at AT&T, I did research, and I saw not one corporate gift from AT&T, and I was, you know, they informed me, well, we had alums who would even say, you know, don't give on behalf of AT&T. We made one of our, at least in that year, we did a $50,000 contribution two years ago, and we have since, I mean, we sponsored the back cover of the program. We're doing wonderful things. We have a great partnership. And, uh, and even at the Red River State Fair Class, we wanted the premier sponsor. So AT&T is proud of Grambling. Uh, and we're going to continue, as long as I'm involved, we're going to continue to engage and do more to help Grambling. Uh, in, in, a, in a sense, the President Gallo said Grambling is back. Former SGA president, former mayor, great leader, David Aubrey. Thank you so much. Thank man. you, Centauri. All right, David Aubrey joining us. We'll take this time out. When we come back, we'll have Mark Newman on, vice president for advancement at Grambling State University here on the show. Two-minute timeout, two minutes. We'll be right back. Did you want to sit down or stand up? I'm fine. Stand okay. Up. Uh, Prof, I got uh, Vice President Newman on, and then after him, we'll take a break and we'll do Jonathan, all right? Okay. All right. Well, you can just call me saying all my friends do. Okay. So. What'd you say, man? Can y'all hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. can hear you fine. Welcome back here to Eddie G. Robinson Memorial Stadium here on the campus of Grambling State University, Santoria Black. And I'm now uh, privileged to be joined by the vice president, new vice president of uh, institutional advancement, Mark Newman. And he, I knew he was special when he told me he was from the Midwest, born in Chicago, Illinois. Chicago, Illinois is home to me. We spent the last 13 years in North Carolina, but uh, Chicago's home. But I'll tell you what, one of the biggest things here uh, is one of the biggest things is that this is a great opportunity, and I know one of the things that you talked about is, uh, I read an article talking about how you just want to get in, learn about this culture, and hit the ground running by putting in resources and getting people galvanized. Yeah, it's, you know, everything's here. Yeah. You know, I think you, when you compare Grambling to a number of institutions, especially HBCUs, Grambling has everything. It has facilities, it has a, a, a dynamic faculty, a dynamic staff, it has a alumni base that is galvanized, it has a, a new dynamic visionary president, so all of the pieces are here. It's 
now about connecting dots. Right. And I, you know, one of my goals is to come in and and, and kind of sit back, um, see what's working, see what's not working, and 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 be that person who kind of leads the effort to connect those dots. Um, great opportunities. You know, one of the things that I, I had a chance to uh, read a little bit about you, and, and when I was talking to someone, it seems like when you look at how you come in, you understand the importance of how athletics comes in and is it a part of advancement and how everything works together and you have good vision for the dollars that come in. At the, at the end of the day, athletics on most campuses um, is a lifeblood. If you, you know, from where my vantage point right now, if I look at all these people who are here for homecoming today, uh, these are constituents. These are folks who love rambling and, um, you know, in, in our culture, they come back for athletics. They support athletics. If you look at the scoreboard and and see a football team, you know, thrashing somebody 42 to nothing, they are excited, they're proud of their institution, so you you have to take advantage of, of those opportunities. Absolutely. And, and you know what, I think that it's, it's great now to see, you know, and when President Gallo came in, there was a lot of questions, there was a lot of uh, things that were going on at that point in time, the inconsistency at the head, and now that there's more consistency at that point, bringing in people who will bring that kind of consistency to the university, it, it doesn't only help with the feeling of alumni and their giving and people come back, but it also really fosters more consistent relationships in the business community. Well, and the, that key word you just, you just used, relationships. And, you know, it takes time to cultivate real relationships where people feel comfortable um, not only giving, but also being an advocate on behalf of your cause. And, uh, you know, I, I preach what I call next level giving. It is great for me to get a gift from you. It's, it's great for me to get a gift from one individual, but it's more impactful if that individual opens up their network and they become an advocate or a fundraiser on behalf of, of, of Grambling State. And that's what we're looking to do. We're looking to utilize those individuals who support Grambling now as ambassadors. Right. And when they go back to Dallas or Chicago or D.C. or wherever home is, you know, not only are they, we, we want them to recruit students, but we also want them to open Grambling to their network, to their churches, to their employers as we look at matching gifts. That's where major gifts come from. Yeah. They come from relationships. And, uh, we look to utilize those relationships to, I mean, those those relationships to expand offerings and expand opportunities for the university. Well, and the last thing I want to ask you, of course, being from Chicago, of course, the north uh -oh. and the south side, Cubs on the north side, Sox on the south side, are you rooting for the Cubs? Uh, okay. The way I will politically answer this question <laughs> is... I'm watching the series, and I am not rooting against the Chicago Cubs. I got you. I, I am uh, I'm wishing them the best. They're young. They're dumb. You know, I, I grew up in an era <laughs> where, um, you know, my favorite player was Shawan Dunson. I don't know if people remember oh, yeah. the, the shortstop of the Cubs who, you know, was just dynamic. I, you know, I love Dusty Baker, Ernie Banks, Devon DeHaven. So they're Cubs players, but where I come from on oh, the yeah. south side of Chicago, if, you know, if I show up talking about I'm supporting the Cubs, I can't go home. <laughs> so uh, so to, to, to make it, I will say I'm not rooting against the Cubs. I wish them the best. Um, I like Joe Madden. I like the, 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 the players. I like the fact that they're young. Yeah. And they're, they're at this level, they're inexperienced, but I think that's going to help them through this process. And they're going to be a power yeah. in the National League in years to come. Well, it has certainly been a pleasure, Mr. Newman. Look forward to working with you. Well, thank you very much. I've enjoyed this. I'm enjoying homecoming and enjoying being a Grambling. I, I, I look forward to being worthy enough to be called part of the Grambling family. Well, you already are. You got that pin on. Uh, you are, as they said, you have been baptized. You're thank already you. Come to a game. <laughs> well, thank you very much, and I've enjoyed it. All right. We'll take this time out when we come back. More of the Halftime Show. Professor coming up with Jonathan Williams here on the Halftime Show. We'll be right back.
Prop, you there? Yeah. Take four uh, four minutes on the on the interview and then a break, okay? Down to you in just a second here, bro. All right. Before you go, I gotta talk to you about something. Else. Okay. Welcome back here to Eddie G. Robinson Memorial Stadium here in Grambling, Louisiana, the world fame. Getting ready to hit the field and down on the field, somebody that has been around Grambling a long time doing big things, Professor Nick Harrison with a special guest. You know, it's Grambling, 2000, Grambling Homecoming 2016, and you can't throw a rock without finding a, a fantastic former Grambling player. And we got one right here in form of Jonathan Williams, who joins us here on the Nissan Halftime. Jonathan, first of all, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So what have you been up to since leaving Grambling State University? I actually relocated to Houston, Texas from Florida. Uh, I got a job there at NRG Stadium. Well, not at the stadium, at the actual company, doing IT work and computer science work. So how does it feel to be back here, to be back on the sidelines with this Tiger team? It was a little weird, just not having on the uniform, suiting up. That's the only biggest difference being a spectator instead of actually playing the game. So, has there been any plays that you've heard, seen today that made you feel like, man, I need to get the pads on? I mean, they're up 42 to nothing. You think you can't, you know, just jump in, beginning of the second half, go out there, throw a couple touchdowns, add on to that resume? Uh, nah, my time's up here in college. My time done. Uh, the, the, the team, they're doing a great job. Kincaid and, and, the, and the rest of the offense and Definitely the defense playing lights out. Jonathan Williams joining us here on the Nissan Halftime. Jonathan, take us back to when you were playing for Grambling State. Any interesting stories, fun stories from when you were a player that they just stick out in your mind? Uh, fun stories? I would say actually my first start as a, as a, uh, my first start in college was a homecoming game. 2013 against Mississippi Valley. That was probably one of the, one of my best performances, hands down, as a, as a college athlete. So that's that's a great, just a highlight in my life as a college student. Now, what do you think of this year's team? I know you were talking about it a little bit about how Kincaid is playing and how the defense is playing. What do you think about this year's team? How do you think they're doing? I think this year's team come with a lot of experience. So they have a lot of returners on both sides of the ball, and and as far as the coaching staff is doing great with. with just mentoring them and not only becoming like better football players and perfecting their crowd, but better men as a whole. What about this crowd, Jonathan? Look at these, look at this crowd, man. It's packed from wall to wall. There are people sitting up on the hill. There are people sitting over. Just it's it's absolutely packed, man. How does it feel to look at this crowd? How does it feel? The support from Gremlin Nation and Grand Fam, as we call it, it's it's great. Just to know that everyone comes back to celebrate homecoming, where, where it all started back way before any of, any of us. To see all the older, older alumni here, it, it's just great. It's a great feeling. So getting your, from getting your first start at a homecoming game to being back here at your first homecoming as an alumni, Jonathan, great, great to have you back. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate your good luck to you, man. Thank you. 
Jonathan Williams, former Grambling quarterback here on the Grambling Sports Radio Network in the Nissan Halftime. We're going to take this time out, come back with more action in the second half here on the Grambling Sports Radio Network. Welcome back to Robinson Stadium here on the campus of Grambling State University. It's still halftime. Ossie Clark here with you for halftime as the Grambling State University World Fame Tiger Marching Band is performing here at halftime. So I'm going to catch you up on some scores that are going on around the country. Michigan beat Michigan State 32 to 23 on today. It was Notre Dame on, on top of Miami, but 8.07, excuse me, 7.50 left to go in the second quarter of play. And it's second and goal with Miami handling the football. It is Georgia Tech beating Duke today, 38-35. to Temple on top of Cincinnati, 17-13. to Western Kentucky on top of uh, Florida Atlantic, 24 to nothing. Florida is losing to Georgia 10-7 with 505 left to go in the second quarter of play. Baylor and Texas are all knighted up at 14. Army and Wake Forest are 7-7. And Sanford and Mississippi State. Mississippi State is on top of Sanford right now, 21 to 13. Let's see if we can catch you up on the on the SWAC scores. Rambling. And of course, time left that they play each other. But here's some swag score. Prairie View A&M University is on top of Jackson State, 21 to nothing. Whew. Southern is beating Alcorn State, 31 to 13, with 12:07 left to go in the third quarter of play. Alabama A&M is on top of Alabama State, 14 to three, with uh, they're just now starting the second quarter of play. That game is on ESPN three. And later on tonight. It'll be Sam Houston and Texas Southern playing each other. That game is at 6 p.m. That game can also be seen on ESPN3. We're going to take this time out, and when we come back, we'll get you ready for the third quarter of today's football game between Grambling and Pine Bluff. Two-minute timeout. You're listening to the Grambling Sports Radio Network.
Welcome back to Robinson Stadium here on the campus of Rambling State University. Tigers will return this kick all the way across the 25-yard line. Rambling did a really good job of setting the wall that time, or the wedge in the middle of the field. But on that, <coughs> excuse me, penalty markers come into play. And it's looked like it's going to go against Grambling, maybe a block in the back. 42 to nothing is our score. Grambling on top of Pine Bluff. So we can give you some halftime numbers. Grambling had 14 first downs in the first half of this football game. 44 rushing yards, 343 passing yards. Kincaid was 16 of 18 in the game. Grambling overall 29, uh, total plays 387 yards. That is absolutely phenomenal. Tigers did have a full high, nine penalties for 69 yards. Well, that's something that Coach Bob, I'm sure we'll talk about that on Monday, but uh, the penalties are something that have been inconsistent some days more than others, but I think ultimately what, one of the things that he talked about was just making sure that, you know, you don't beat yourself. 42 to nothing, you know I mean? Great game so far. Now we've got to stop at your play. While we have a chance, let me catch you up on the rest of these stats. Pine Bluff had nine first, down, um, nine first downs. They had a negative one yard rushing in the first half. 154 yards passing, 18 to 32, two interceptions uh, in that first half. 45 plays, only 155 yards. Pine Bluff, six penalties, 31 yards, so they cut down a little bit on the penalty, still had six, but time of possession, 20 minutes, 16 seconds, to Grambling's 944. Here's a stat that I think is key. Pine Bluff, two of 12 on third downs, and 0 for 1 when they had the ball in the red zone area. There's something else now, that made six straight quarters that Grambling's rushing defense has not allowed a yard. Wow. Six straight quarters. Here is the give, coming across the 15, out to the 20, to the 25-yard line. And it's going to be Justin Kelly with the run, and Kelly has been doing, getting the, his, his uh, fair share today, as Carter not in the lineup, but uh, Kelly has been getting his fair share of carries here and has been taking advantage of them. Definitely, six carries early in the game, 26 yards for Justin Kelly. Averaged a little over four yards a carry. Back in the first half, first he's got to make he's got to make uh, use of every one of those, Sam. No, oh, absolutely. First down and ten here, and here is Kincaid. Twenty-six getaway, I believe, was the name of this play. And Kincaid puts on a few moves and gets out of bounds at about the 31, 32 yard line. So, even in a busted play, it looked like he gets about six yards. And he does. Uh, Twenty-six uh, getaway, I believe, was the, was the play call. Oh, Eddie Robinson played to start the second half of this football game. Tigers starting off in the uh, wing T look. But you know what? As many people that try to mimic that wing T, nobody could perfect it quite like Coach Robinson could. Second down and four for Grambling. Balls at the Grambling 31. Man in motion is Dominique Leak. Kincaid keeps the ball, 30. 35, out of bounds at the 40, maybe the 41 yard line. They'll call him out at the 40, but it's a first down. Yeah, easy first down pick up that time. Pick up of nine yards that time by uh, Kincaid on that run. I don't think you're going to see anything fancy here in the second half of the no. Grambling Tigers. It's going to be, <clears throat> as they like to say, smash mouth football. Consistent with their game plan. Oh, yeah. Slot to the double slot formation now for the Grambling Tigers. Kincaid in the shotgun. Kincaid gives it to Justin Kelly. Boy, he just bounces off the tacklers, gets inside the 40. That's five big yards. Yeah, he gets to the, about the 45-yard uh, line, and that's five yards. And, you know, he looked like Mike Allstott, just bouncing off of players. He reminds you a lot of uh, Mike Allstott. He's 240 pounds at 5'11". He's a big guy. And once he gets all that moving in one direction, you better watch Hold out. On. I couldn't imagine tackling somebody like that. Not only has he got a low center of gravity, but he's so powerful. Leak in motion. Here's Kincaid. Gets it to Chad Williams. Williams shaking up just a little bit. Now gets away from the cover. Look at the 
back, tiptoeing down the sideline, 25-20, 15-10-5. He gives a ballerina going down the sideline, touchdown. Third touchdown of the game for Chad Williams. Screen pass set over to the near sideline that time. Did a wonderful job. Did you see right around the 25-yard line, he keyed that safety that was trying to take the angle on him, and it looked like he hit an extra gear that time. What a play, 44 yards on the touchdown pass to Chad Williams. That and gives him 194 for the game. Wow. 48 to nothing, trying to make it 49 to nothing. Here is the kick. It's up. It's good. 49 love is the score right now. The Grambling State University Tigers out front and in charge in homecoming 2016. We will take this one-minute timeout, one minute, with the Tigers on top, 49 to nothing. One-minute timeout. We'll be right back. <coughs> Let me tell you something. Tiptoeing down the sideline like this. Yes. That's, that's twice. Really remember back in the first half, he had one where he did the same thing. I've got to give Brian a count uh, for this uh, meal at Applebee's. The ten of us? Something like that. Hey, uh, Prof, you down there? Uh, prof is... I don't know what Prof is. I don't see it. I don't hear anybody down there. Welcome back here to Eddie G. Robinson Memorial Stadium. We'll go to the top of the hour here in just a second after the kickoff. Comes down to Pond Bluff at the 15, out to the 20, 25, out to the 30. Pond Bluff trying to get a little bit of room to the 34-yard line. Let's pause 10 seconds for a station identification. You're listening to the Grambling Sports Radio Network. Back here at Eddie G. Robinson Memorial Stadium here in Grambling, Louisiana. It is 49 to nothing, Grambling on top with 12.43 remaining in the third quarter of play. And there are some fans who have said, you know what, the Tigers are in really good shape. <clears throat> We're going out and eat some ribs and some chicken and gumbo and jambalaya and red beans. Enjoy each other's company. Yeah. Nice little job there by Willie Young avoiding tacklers. He gets up four yards out of it. Willie Young had six catches for 64 yards back in the first half of this football game. Give him about six or more, giving him 70 on the day. And I think he needed right at about 70 yards to break uh, the receiving record. Mm. So he may be very close to that. Slot to the near side, one receiver far side. Here is Duncan back to pass, looking, and it's complete. And that's going to be out to number nine, Cody Swain. And it's complete out to the 45-yard line. Mm, just short of the 45, but still a first down. First down. Yeah, good job that time. I tell you what, Brandon Duncan's a tough kid because he's been hit over and over and over and over again in this football game. And that time he took a big hit, but he got the ball out of his hands. Plenty enough time for the receiver to make that catch and pick up that Pine Bluff first down. First down and 10 for Arkansas Pine Bluff. Trips to the far side, one receiver to the near side. Duncan in the shotgun. Tiger showing blitz. Duncan back to pass. Looking, he's going down. Son, he was hammered big time. When I say big time, Santori, I'm talking about a big time hit put on that time by the Grambling Tigers defensive end, stepping up and making that play for Grambling. That's how you play the defense. Continue to put the pressure on. Make it hard for your opponent to find any type of offensive rhythm. There's no rhythm at all right now for Pond Blood's offense. Five receivers set. Here's Duncan back to pass. Wow, Willie Young is steamrolled 
by number 33, Jameel Jackson. And Young is lucky that he wasn't uh, hurt on that play because uh, I tell you, Duncan left him a little bit exposed with that pass that was a little bit high. Yeah, that time Jameel Jackson is like a heat seeking missile straight down the line and he was ready to lower the shot on Willie Young on that last play. He did a great job of rallying into the football and when he got there, he got there with a little bit of, uh, of disgruntledness uh, amongst himself, Santori. Hmm, that's a good word, disgruntledness. <laughs> Here is Duncan back to pass, looking, and down he's go. going down again. Donovan McCray. Down at the 30-yard line, and it is fourth down and a little bit. They would have to get to the 46 of Ramlin to get to the first down. So it's at 24 yards. Yep, it's about uh, fourth and 24, fourth and 26. You just don't draw them up like that. No. At 24, fourth and 24, doesn't matter. As uh, there'll be a punt here for Arkansas Pond Bluff. Gillen will be kicking. I should say that uh, Willie Young has eclipsed that record, Santori. He only needed 59 yards coming into the game. Good decision there by Chad Williams getting away from the ball. It goes out at about the 30 yard line. First down and 10 for the Grambling Tigers. Say hey, Barnes and Noble. They will be open until 8 p.m. tonight, and then tomorrow, they call it the finale, 8.30 a.m. until 1 p.m. So make sure that you visit our good friends at Barnes & Noble, uh, good friend Elliot Jones, who was in school when I was in school. Uh, he was a, a high school student then, and I was the uh, older student. Make sure that you go by and visit them. And also, they have those replacement tickets for the Red River Classic. So if you are a season ticket holder and you're looking for uh, those replacement tickets, they have them here at the Frederick C. Hobby Assembly Center. Here's the play on first down, getting out to about the 35-yard line. It'll be second down at about four. Also, uh, don't forget about the Greek show coming up tonight, 8 p.m. inside the Frederick C. Hobby Assembly Center. Doors will open at 7, and tickets will be on sale at the Frederick C. Hobby Assembly Center ticket office for $20. Don't miss it. Should be a great time. We're going to the Greek show tonight, bro? Uh, doubt it very seriously. Come on, man. We got to get a step in on. I got, uh, I got well, boots I mean, at home. You know, <coughs> you know, I'd love to do that, you know, but the older you get, you know, steps don't step like they used to step anymore. <laughs> yeah. I did a probate show when I was in school. Did and a couple of step things. Like I said, we're, it's not like we're ancient of days by any stretch of the imagination, but Things have changed. Oh, just a little bit. One man in the backfield here for the Grambling Tigers. Here is the give to number six, Lindemann Brooks. Gets across the 45 and to about the 47, 48 of the Grambling Tigers. Brooks carried back in the first quarter, had one for 11 yards in the game. And he's one of those guys, Santoria, who was originally supposed to play the wide receiver position for Grambling State University. He was gonna, they were going to convert him from wide out from running back to wide out, and now he's back into his normal position. And here is Kincaid looking for an open receiver incomplete as uh, he had a lot of pressure put on him looking for Chad Williams, who was the, I guess, the nearest receiver, if you want to call him the nearest yes, receiver. I guess you could put it that way. Well, plenty of receivers, they were just all on the sideline. He was the nearest eligible receiver. Maybe? Eligible. There you go. New receiver in the ball game for the Grambling Tigers, Quentin Geis, coming in. He's on the uh, near side with Dominique Leak, who is in the inside slot position. Verlin Hunter on the opposite side here on third down and about three. Here's a give to Justin Kelly across the 50. Falls forward. Ooh, maybe be close. Gonna be close. I was just about to say, I, I thought Geis was from Monroe. Wonder what relationship he is to Macari Geis. Macari Geis, yeah. That is going to be real close. It is going to be fourth down and short. And Devontae Kincaid, 734, if, by the way, left in this third quarter of play. 49 and nothing is our score. Tigers missed a first down opportunity on. On fourth and goal, they were the best team in the conference on fourth down conversions. All kinds of jumping going on. It's going to be a free play. Guess who gets the ball? Chad Williams shaking and baking gets out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. And uh, if, that was, <coughs> if that was a free play, 
they may decline that and take the ball to 35. That's what I would do. I would just pad my stats at this particular point. Uh, Kincaid had 343 at halftime with five touchdowns. Mm. Incredible. And then he uh, threw one just a second ago to uh, Chad Williams. So give him six on the, on the day. It's going to be a first down for the Grambling Tigers at the Pond Bluff 35-yard line. If, if uh, Kincaid scores here again, I think we'll see um, another quarterback in the ball game shortly. Somebody loses their hat on the ground. That is one of the big offensive linemen. That's uh, William Waddell, who lost his hat that time for the Tigers. Doesn't he have to come out for a play? Mm -hmm. Ball resting at the 30-yard line of Arkansas Pine Bluff. 646 remaining here in this third quarter of play. 49 to nothing is our score. Next week, Tigers take on Alabama A&M University in Huntsville. Then they'll come back to North Louisiana and go to Shreveport. Here's a give to Justin Kelly, 30. Still on his feet, gets to about the 25-yard line. And that's enough for another Tiger first down. I tell you what, it's some major banging going on in the trenches but between Grambling and Pine Bluff. Uh, good job that time by Trey Goins and uh, allowing the Grambling City University Tigers to get to the edge. He did a great job of being able to keep the defensive tackles from Gadding to Justin Kelly, and Kelly was able to turn that corner as quickly as possible and picked up big yardage for Grambling State. Here is a give to Lindeman Brooks. I think Lindeman, if he stays out wide, has a better chance to outrun that defender that was trying to give chase to him. And let me tell you something. When you look at uh, Lindeman Brooks for this uh, Grambling State University Tiger football team, not a very big kid. Uh, about 5'8 from Austin, Texas, but man, he has got amazing speed out there on the outside. Oh, absolutely. He and Martez, I'd like to see them run against each other, see how fast oh. they really are. Play action. Here is PK looking, trying to find a open receiver. He has him. And that's going to be uh, number, I believe that's going to be number Bryce, 84. Bryce Williams. It is Bryce Williams. That's enough for a Tiger first down. It'll be first down and goal, it looks like. For the Grambling Tigers. Hey, just keep a trickle matriculating that ball right on down the field. Somebody else, Justin Kelly, reminded me of who was a big, strong running back that was very hard to bring down, Eric Gant. Yes, Eric Gant was much bigger, though. Yeah. And look at that run by Justin Kelly. But Eric Gant had the same ability that Justin, Gant, uh, Justin Kelly has. Mm -hmm. Just on that play right there, you saw him go about 15 yards untouched off of the left tackle, left guard. Give a lot of credit once again to Trey Goins and Trent Scott for stepping up and making uh, a hole for their running back to be able to run through on that last play. You keep playing until the final whistle blows. And right now, that's what you're seeing from the Grambling State University Tigers. 55 to nothing, about to be 56 to nothing. If the extra point is good, up, it is good. Timing on the field with the score. The Grambling State University Tigers, 56. Arkansas Pond Bluff, nothing. We'll take this one minute timeout, one minute. You're listening to the Grambling Sports Radio Network. It's time. Hey, is anybody down on the field? Uh, Where are our reporters at? I don't know. I don't see them. I don't see nobody. I'm looking down here on the right. Uh, let's see anybody. Do they leave? Hello? Hello? We are on the way back down to the sideline. Okay, I didn't know. Yeah, I told y'all right after the halftime, we were on the, uh, we, I was headed up. Oh, I, didn't, I wasn't here so I didn't hear you. Oh, okay. I'm not going to even lie to you. I didn't have my headset on there for a second. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, he got under that one. He wants to. He wants to sky kick it. It's on, it's on, it's on purpose. Welcome back here to Eddie G. Robinson Memorial Stadium on the campus of Grambling State University. The Tigers right now on top 
of Arkansas Pine Bluff by the score of five of uh, 56 to nothing. Santoria Black, Ossie Clark, Professor Nick Harrison, Chassie Livingston, Jair Payne, all going on back down the sideline. I was like, you know, where's everybody at? And the professor says, you know, I'll get there when I get there. Oh, we walking through the stadium now. Yeah, How y'all doing? He said, he said, you know, it's, it's hey, red beans up there. I'm, you, I'm trying you, to hear this. You may be able to interview one or two of those fans. I think they had taquitos. Yeah, they had they taquitos did. as well. They were really good, too. Delicious taquitos. And this pass goes over the head of the wide receiver for Arkansas Pine Bluff, number 82, Paris Mack. And I just want to take some time out to thank Mark Newman, new vice president for uh, institutional advancement. We were talking off the air. Looks like we'll be able to do some great things together. Of course, David Aubrey and all the things that he's done. And then, of course, our esteemed governor, uh, John Bell Edwards, for joining us here at halftime as well, just before halftime, if you missed that. And uh, you always got in trouble talking about wearing a grandma jacket. <laughs> Well, that was kind of the intent. <laughs> you know he want to wear that hey, jacket. Hey, I'm like Roddy Piper. Just when you have the answers to the question, I change, I change the, the question. question. <laughs> Second down here, or third down, I should say, and about uh, eight yards to go for Arkansas Pond Bluff. Tigers on top, 56 to nothing, 442 remaining in this third quarter of play. And some fans from Grambling leaving as uh, they were asked for a love offering. Yeah, typically that's what happens. <laughs> People gave that first time in the benevolent and the public, and yeah, now they're asking for the love offer. They're asking for a little bit too much. And oh, this one nearly oh, picked wow. off. It was right over the head of the uh, defender, Dedrick Shy, who's now into the ball game for the Grambling Tigers. Shy, a uh, junior from New Orleans, Louisiana. So now the Tigers have a few new players in the contest. Yeah, that pass was intended for a Paris Mack. I tell you what, Brandon Duncan just did a good job of getting that ball out of his hands. He, he sure did. He was under duress. And now Pine Bluff will do something that they've been very familiar with today. Punting. I just thought I saw somebody put up that Baptist finger and walk out of here, Sam. Yeah, I think they did. And I'm telling you, there are better than 30, 40,000, 30,000 on this campus. This kick oh, goes way up in the air. Fair catch by Berlin Hunter. Great job by Hunter catching that ball at the 30-yard line. Yeah, I was looking, uh, when you were looking at campus last night, it was just gridlocked. Today you were on campus and took probably about 15 minutes uh, when we were when we came here. And that was, I don't know, two hours and some change before we were on the air. And, um, but there are some people who are out on the interstate, and, and this is no lie, I was, at one of my wife's and I favorite coffee establishments this morning. Starbucks? And, yep. And uh, there was a guy who was coming in for the game coming up tonight between Louisiana Tech and Rice. What time and, is that? Is that game? 6 p.m. Okay. And he said that it was, it, it was the traffic was backed up, and this was at 9 a.m. this morning, at least a mile from the exit, eight, from exit 81. Wow. And that was at 9 a.m. this morning. Yeah, that was this morning. 9 o'clock. I'm driving in to get here because, you know, we needed to be here super early because of all the people that were going to be here. I couldn't get off on exit 81. I had to go down to the industry exit and drive through Simsboro just to get back on campus to be here on time. I have a friend of mine who's listening to the game today. He said, y'all are crazy. He said, they're leaving because you're asking for a love offering. <laughs> That's what, I can't stop laughing at that. I'm telling you, that's what happened. They gave the benevolence. You know, when I was a, when I was a young young person in church, I was like, who is the bereaved family? And where are they at? I didn't know about that until I got a little bit older, about 13 when my mother and father explained it to me. I was like, who is the bereaved family? We talk about them all the time, and I've never seen them before. And, and, I, and if they continue to lose family members, how they existed? So I finally figured that out. <laughs> Amazing what you figure uh, out. When you get older, yes. Yeah. Tigers with the football. Kincaid in the shotgun. 56 to nothing is the score. Going back to pass, looking. Steps up. Strike at the 30-yard line. And that's going to be number 80, Montrell Meander. And he's one of these, one of those young receivers that they're going to be looking at after Dominique Leak, Chad Williams, and those guys leave, and you can hear those coaches, they're, just, they're still coaching like it's still nothing, nothing. And that's, yeah, you know, that's the mark of a really good staff. Yeah, you continue to hear them yell, yeah, hurry up, hurry up. They got young players in there, and they're trying to get them acclimated to game speed here. 
Here's Devontae Kincaid, back to pass, looking. He'll take off with the football. Now he'll pass it, gets it to Chad Williams, steps up, and he'll go out of bounds at about the 48-yard line. One of the coaches yelling at Chad, say, don't run backwards. Yeah, that's right. Keep going forward, whatever you do. You know, when guys make plays, you don't want them to uh, – have that in their mind that they that they can't do what they need to do to get themselves open, but at the same time, fundamentally, you have to do the right thing. When you can make positive plays, keep it positive. Here's Kincaid. He'll hand it off. And uh, that time to number six, Lindemann Brooks, 219 remaining in this third quarter of play. 56 to nothing is our score. Yes, I said the third quarter of play. Yes. It was 35 to nothing early in this game. It was. What a party at the night. And Brooks again with the carry, gets the first down across the 45, down to the 42. Uh, the party is right here right now for Grambling State University. Oh, man, and you know, it's, speaking of party, I've got a lot of pictures and a video of Robert Clark that I'm going to be posting on our uh, Grambling Sports Radio Network Facebook page that uh, professor is teaching me more and more about. I built the page, and, and I don't know as much as I thought I did. Hey, man, the page is hopping. A lot of stuff going on on that page. You hear that guy walking behind me talking about a party? Yeah. Who was that? I don't know. I thought, that was, I thought it was you. No. I, I me? No. Yeah. I, I would like, never talk about such things. I got church in the morning. I do too, but I mean, the reality is I, I did hear word, the word party. I, I mean, I heard that too. And all I can tell you, prophet, prophet is to get your back up off the wall. <laughs> and then collect the love offering. Yes. What did you do? Dude, let me tell you. You know, that is the fundamental part of every worship. I don't, I don't know why people act like that. that's not a part of it. If you're trying to go and party, remember the best way to get there is in a Nissan. Please drive responsibly. Hey, there you go. Tell you what, there's enough people here at Grambling State University today to, to just make you, you know, be thankful to be a part of the HBCU experience. Here's a handoff to Brooks. Brooks slips as he goes around the corner. Brooks, I believe, has run the ball three consecutive times. Picked up a yard on that play. Just couldn't keep his footing to get his shoulder square north and south. A minute 30 and some change. Here in the third quarter of play, 56 to nothing. Grambling on top of Pine Bluff. Kincaid still in the ball game. Brooks in the backfield with him. Here's the second down and eight play. As Verlin Hunter goes in motion, speed sweep to Verlin Hunter. Hunter gets around the edge, and he's going to be very close to a Grambling Tiger first down, down to the Pine Bluff 34 yard line, maybe the 33. I tell you what, uh, they continue to move the ball. And remember what offensive coordinator Eric Dooley said, the challenge to the offense this year, whether it was first team or second team, is to get a playoff every eight to ten seconds. Whew. That's a, that's a lot rolling. of plays. You're rolling. Do you hear me? That's a good defensive play right sure there. Sure was, right on Berlin Hunter. Good defensive play. Good tackle and open field that time by Pine Bluffs. Look like number uh, three, Scotty Pace, the strong safety. I mean, Pace, Scotty Pace. Fourth down and about, uh, what is it, four yards to go? I don't think Graham is going to run another play this no. quarter. About the end of here. Fourth and, four, fourth and five, I believe. End of the third quarter with the score, the Grambling State University Tigers on top, 56 to nothing. We'll take this one minute timeout, one minute. You're listening to the Grambling Sports Radio Network.
Welcome back here to Eddie G. Robinson Memorial Stadium on the campus of Grambling State University. Hey, just want to thank all of our listeners for tuning into the Grambling Sports Radio Network. And we got some great news to tell you about. President Gallo and the GSU's athletic department and the entire GSU family would like to congratulate the family of the late, great Gary Bickhans Johnson on his selection to the class of 2017 Black College Football Hall of Fame. The formal induction ceremony will take place on February the 25th, 2017 in Atlanta, Georgia. So congratulations going out to him. Here is the punt, and it rolls into the end zone. Touch back, and it'll come out to the 20-yard line. So that's where the Tigers will have the ball first down and 10. Also, hey, I want to talk about this because if you're watching the video on YouTube, there are a lot of great students who are part of the Television Center broadcast. And uh, over the course of last semester and this summer, the Television su Center suffered two floods and a fire that virtually wiped out all of the equipment that they used to train. And to say that these kids are getting valuable experience is an understatement, considering that they've done work now for ESPN, Fox, CBS, and all these other networks. And we'll tell you more about this after this play here. Duncan in the shotgun. Is Duncan still in the game? No. No, it's going to be number 16, I believe. Is that Earl Patterson from Memphis, Tennessee, the redshirt sophomore yes. in the ball game? But anyway, uh, the television center lost nearly all of their equipment. Uh, and to say that they have still been going on with basically one camera is incredible. And so you see productions like this, like you're watching right now, if you're watching the uh, YouTube channel through GSU TV. In order to help these students out, I just want you guys to call the Office of Advancement, or you can even call, well, let's put this up on our uh, Facebook page through our Grammy Sports Radio Network on how you can help in the effort to uh, get these students equipment that is so desperately needed in order to help them out. And, uh, you know, everybody wants to know where can they find the YouTube channel, where can they do this, and what have you. But, uh, you know, all the equipment that they use is, is gone. And they're actually we're using other gear right now in order to, to stream this broadcast. And just want to thank them uh, for all that they do. So uh, we're going to put this information out on the Facebook page on how you can give, or if you know of a television station that has some equipment that uh, the TV center could use, in order to uh, better these students, it would be greatly appreciated. We'll get that out to you. Here's a quarterback. It's a number 16 once again, Earl Patterson on the run. Gets out to the 25-yard line. And it'll be, uh, what, fourth down, I believe? Yeah. yeah. Pomblup moves the ball about five, six yards, punt. Perse and Perseverance, Santoria, is the word that I would use that is a moniker along with excellence here at Grambling State University. We at Grambling State University find a way to persevere and make the best out of every situation that we've ever been put in. And it's that old statement of making uh, lemonades out of the lemons that you're given. And sometimes you're not blessed to have the best of everything that you may need, but you still may be able to make the best situation out of it. Absolutely. Here's a punt coming down to Grambling at about the 30-yard line. Oh, look at that stiff arm right at the 35. He runs out of bounds. Is that Davis? I believe it is. Devontae Davis. Caught a touchdown last week against Mississippi Valley. Sure did. A couple other things to tell you about here. We told you about the Greek show coming up tonight, 8 p.m. And that'll be at uh, Eddie G. Rock. That'll be at the uh, Assembly Center. Also, we want to welcome back uh, the members of the class of 1996 celebrating their 20th year reunion. They thank you for your continued contribution. They contributed over $10,000 to the university. Wow. And uh, earlier today, uh, it's incredible when you come back and you got a 20 year reunion and you make something happen like that, a $10,000 donation. And that's kind of, of, of uh, galvanizing the support that you need. Here is the give. Across the 40 to about the 43 yard line on the carry, number Charles. six. Is that Charles Wright in it? Charles Wright now in the ball game here for the uh, Grambling State University Tigers as Devontae Kincaid, for all purposes, is probably done for the night. Hey, for all purposes. Yeah. Montreal Meander along with Quentin Geis in the ball game at receiver, as well as uh, got some other guys out there who are, are new to the lineup. I'll try to get you caught up on those. Number three is out there. We got to get his name. Yes. 
First down, I should say a third down and about one here. I tell you what, from week to week, that's one of those things that you have to do with coaches as you got to check with them to make sure that they're not changing jersey numbers and different things of that nature. First down handoff off the left side. I believe that was Brooks again. Gets across the 50 down to the Pine Bluff 48 yard line. 56 to nothing I scored. Yeah, it's always good when you can uh, win a game and win going away and be comfortable at doing it <laughs> and enjoy the rest of your homecoming. Got all kinds of alumni events that'll be going on around campus as well. Brooks, to give. Brooks gets out to about the 36 yard line. He's running the pill, man. He is. I'm telling you, he is awesome. He has great vision. He had great blocking that time between the right guard and the right tackle to move some people out of the way. Good job that time. By Brooks. I believe three of Jonathan Williams, if I'm not mistaken, he's a transfer from Wake Forest. Oh, yes. Trips to the near side, one receiver to the far side as they look to the sideline for the play. Here's a give. Oh, they're going to keep it, Charles. Charles will keep it. Gets across the 25 to the 20 down to about the 17, 18 yard line. Had one thing on his mind, Santoria. End zone. Yes, sir. Ticket for the Red River Classic in Shreveport featuring Grambling and Alabama State on sale at the GSU ticket office, 7.30 to 4 p.m. And then the Friday before the game, it'll be open until 6 p.m. Students can get their tickets with a valid student ID and go into gate three. That's the NC two-way gate at Independence Stadium. Our tickets are on sale at the Bastrop, Grambling, and Shreveport branches of the Shreveport Federal Credit Union. Lil Jay's Music in Shreveport, our good friend, Jabba Jaws, owner of that establishment, and members of the Shreveport Alumni Chapter and the GSU Ticket Office. Call 318-274-2625 for more details. A lot of guys subbing in and out now for Pine Bluffs and trying to keep as many fresh bodies in, trying to get some of the younger guys a little bit of work. Coach Monty Coleman, man, is, is really a good coach. He's just got all the young football Team. And Charles Wright will keep the ball. 10 5. Touchdown, Charles Wright. First touchdown, rushing touchdown of the year for Charles. It Wright. is the first touch, rushing touchdown. I think that might be his first rushing touchdown of his Grambling career, I believe. If I'm not mistaken, uh, I don't know if he had a rushing touchdown last year. Uh, I'm, I'm almost certain that he didn't have a rushing touchdown. Uh, but that is his first. Uh, that is uh, his first touchdown here in 2016. And extra point try coming up. And Tigers score another one here. 9:32 remaining in the ball game. Three-yard run by Charles Wright. 63 to nothing is our score. We'll take this one-minute timeout. One minute. You're listening to the Grambling Sports Radio Network. Is that the last? That's the third that's, quarter. Yeah, that's the first time out of the fourth quarter, I think. Yeah, Catch up, yeah. No. I'm going to talk to the people. Yes. Talk to the people. Just make sure they're sober people. It's time to get. I'm going to talk people. to the people. Sober people. Give the people what they want. Okay. It's a local boy, my bad. Yeah. Carry another one of those lifesavers. Welcome back here to Eddie G. Robinson Memorial Stadium. Kickoff comes down to Pine Bluff on the far side. They get out to about the 38-yard line. It'll be first down and 10. Professor Nick Harrison said pretty soon he's going to go talk to the people. Yes, I am in the stands with people. A couple of people. 
Grambling alumni that are here at the game, and I wanted to get their opinion on, on being back here and the energy that they feel from this gigantic crowd that was here today for homecoming. Uh, first of all, what's your name? Excuse me? I can't hear a word you say. What? Kiki. Kiki. Ah, Kiki. So uh, what year did you graduate? 2014. Okay, where are you from? Seattle, Washington. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got to say about that is boo, first off. So, how do you feel about being back at Grambling? Oh, I love it. Grambling is home. Fantastic. What did you graduate in? Uh, I graduated with my degree in theater. Oh, in theater. Oh, that's fantastic. I should know you then. Um, here's another one. Right here. What's your name? D. D. Kiki and D. Kiki D, if you put them together. Don't go breaking my heart. Uh, so, so, how do you feel about being back at... When did you graduate? 2013. Two th did you forget about it? No, you didn't. 2013? Are you sure? No, how, so how do you feel about being back at Grambling? I feel good. I'm happy to be home. Fantastic. Home. That's what I like to call it. Well, this is, yeah. So, what's your name, sir? Kadarius. Kadarius. So, uh, when did you graduate? Spring 16. Spring 16. Do Young me. man. Young man just now graduated. So, how do you feel about being back here? It's fun. It's my first game as an alumni, and I love it. Tell them that the checks can go to the uh, Institutional Advancement, Grambling State, Grambling University uh, Foundation uh, in favor of the TV Center, and uh, they give you 10%. I will, get, I will tell them about the checks that they yeah. can write. Get Absolutely. your check. Get your checkbook out right now. Okay, so they're getting the checkbook out. I'm going back to you in the booth. All right, Grand, uh, Arkansas Palm Bluff on third down and five. No movement. Jamal Gladden in the ball game now for Palm Bluff on the carry and they will have to punt the ball again. I think they're going to have a new punter. Nope, I was going to say, they have a new punter? Same punter. Uh, Jamie Gilling is pretty, yep. pretty good work. 63 to nothing, 737 remaining here in the ball game. Again, Pond, again, Grambling will take on Alabama A&M next week, and I'm going to tell you, the game of the week next week will be Alcorn and Prairie View. And reason being, uh, coming into this weekend's contest, Alcorn and Jackson were tied at the top of the East. And then on the other side, of course, Prairie View still a game behind, would still be behind Grambling. But uh, Prairie View, it would be a big game in the standings on both sides, especially in the East. It's going to be a uh, delay a game penalty on Pond Bluff. It'll back them up. A couple other things to uh, tell you about. Um, President Gallon with the GSU Athletic Department the entire GSU family would like to congratulate two Grambling basketball legends. As soon as this punt is over with, wow, that's a good punt. Comes down at the 15-yard line, and that'll be first down and 10. The late Robert Bob Hopkins and uh, Willis, the captain, Reed on their selection to the Small College Basketball Hall of Fame. The induction ceremony will be November the 17th in Evansville, Indiana. So congratulations going out to them. I had four pages of announcements, by the way. It's amazing how those announcements continue to get longer and longer, more and more every week. The Grammar State University Department of Athletics would like to thank the following sponsors. CenturyLink, First National Bank, Louisiana Lottery, Airmark, and our new sponsor, Fairfield University. Here is the run. Charles Wright again. Yeah, Charles Wright. Big rush here. He's feeling it now. I said keep riding the horse. He's brought you this far. Charles Wright making it happen. Got some new players in the ball game. Here is the give to Lindemann Brooks across the 25 to about the 29. He is one 29. step away most of the time from just breaking one. Yep, and it's a first down for the Grambling Tigers. And while we have this opportunity, someone sent me a text, and, and I want to uh, to mention this here. Uh, a few people who have not been back to Grambling in a number of years, and just want to kind of give you, uh, kind of give people an update. Uh, the GSU TV Center is run by Alan Blakeney, and he's been responsible for putting these kids in positions to where they're getting a lot of this professional experience. They're able to go on and do a lot of great things. And so, you know, when you talk about people, and I don't mind saying this. When you talk about people who can put folks in position to get professional jobs and they, and they put themselves, 
in the background and put the kids in the foreground and it's not about them, that says a lot about that person. I wish there were more people like that, especially uh, in the communications business, because when you, when you put the kids out in front and it's not about you and what you're doing, it, it really shows your character and how you want kids to succeed because, you know, at the end of the day, it's not about your own personal, uh, what you're doing. It's about how you get these kids in these jobs and positions. And it's called leadership. You know, just because you're in the front of the line doesn't necessarily mean that, that you have to be the person to always be in the front. Sometimes it's better for you to work from behind the scenes and put people in the right place at the right time. It causes them to actually be in a position to succeed in life. Absolutely. And that's what you want. You don't want to have a profession where the practice... Benjamin Brooks, remember you told him about breaking one? Look out, Brooks still going, and he's caught at the 15-yard line. You, wow! That's a heck of a run that time by Brooks. Getting back to what we were just saying, Santoria, but you always want to make sure that people are in a position to succeed. When they leave Grambling State University, what practical experiences do they have that they can apply to real life? Because if they come here and all they can do is get the theoretics and then not be able to apply it or actually get a job, then what good is the degree? Yeah, I tell you, hats off to the Grambling Night, the TV Center. They do a fantastic job on our campus in helping those students. And so, uh, especially, you know, all that the TV Center has been through, man, it's just been unbelievable. By the way, Blake Connor on the touchdown saving tackle. And here is Charles Wright once again running right into the teeth of the defense to about the 13-yard line, and that'll bring up a, a second down here. Uh, a couple other things I do want to uh, mention. I told you about the Bayou Classic tickets are on sale for that, uh, so make sure that you don't wait until the last minute, like Wednesday at noon, to want to come and buy Bayou Classic tickets. It might not be a good thing for you. Uh, also, <laughs> <laughs> take on game day. Nissan, proud supporter of Grambling Athletics, presentation made today by the president of Grambling State University and, of course, interim athletic director, uh, the Obadiah Simmons to Nissan, giving them a game football. Choose Nissan.com innovation at its site. Three-year uh, partnership with Nissan and the Grambling State University Athletic Department. Charles Rice going to score again. Wright is going to score again. Gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Grambling State University. <coughs> and they put up 70 on the board. I tell you what, Santori, I, I, don't, I don't know what to say or what to do when you're just running basic plays, inside give, inside give, inside give, and then fake it, and then let the quarterback keep it around the edge. That's, that's pretty fundamental football stuff right there. 348 remaining in the game. Charles Wright once again. It is now 69 to nothing. I believe uh, last time they put up this many points per view last year. 70 to nothing, now the score. They put up a pretty, uh, 70 spot against the Panthers. I think it was 70 to 59 in that game last year. Yeah, high scoring affair all the way around. Well, this one's not a high all the way around, but it is a high scoring affair. We'll take this one minute timeout, one minute. You're listening to the Gravity Sports Radio Network. Yeah. What? I wasn't expecting this. What? No, I wouldn't either. Yes. I, I mean, they went to the woodshed, got the razor strap out and said, the top of them with it. <laughs> they said they did a Jack Johnson. Don't take this. Personal list. <laughs> I have more people. Keep okay. talking to them. Hold on one second. Back here at Eddie G. Robinson Memorial Stadium, here is the kick by Jonathan Wallace. Comes down to one of the up men. He's tackled immediately. Tackled immediately. Uh, Sean Fox sends in a text on the Nissan text line. Where does this GSU team rank all time? Wow. I tell you what, they keep winning it's, like this. It's one of the better GSU teams total, you know, complete teams uh, because they're, they're, they're amazing on offense, they're super on defense, 
Wow. I, That's a tough one. Yeah. Because uh, I can go back to the team that beat Portland State, who was ranked 16 in the country. Um, Randy Hans was at wide receiver. Here's a run oh, for a quarterback. Randy played well, quarterback. Was he quarterback that year or was it Bruce Eugene? He was quarterback. So Randy Hans. Later, later on in the year, they moved Bruce to the quarterback position, and we lost the game at Alabama State. Then they tried to play him at Nichols, and we, we fell behind early in that contest. They brought Randy back and played him at quarterback in that game, and then uh, Hines went on the roll from that point on. So Randy Hines was a quarterback that year. That was a pretty good the team. Because game, the game winning touchdown was scored by Randy Hines. Yeah, that, that, was a, that was a pretty good team that year. That 90, here's fumble. a run, uh, could be a fumble, and Grambling, I think, has recovered the football. And we're not talking about starters out on the field either. No. I just remember that because it was uh, right after 9 11, Santorini. Yeah, that was the year we were supposed to play Florida AM in Cincinnati. Was that year before, if I'm not mistaken? No, we were supposed year to up? play that same year. We took that 15 hour bus ride to find out that we weren't going to play at all. Yep. And they're going to wind the clock here. 255 remaining in the fourth quarter, 70 to nothing. Who, Grammy the has the ball. Have, I wonder. Huh? Who's the prof have? He said he has prof. Prof has people. Prof, you got people? Yes, I do. I have people. Who, what's your name, sir? Oh, Ricky. Ricky McGee, Grammy Luna, uh, 91. As 91. How do you think today's game? What do you think about today's game? Well, it's lovely. It shows that we back. Grambling is back. Actually, we never left, but we back on top. We won this. You know, I've heard that from a couple of people today saying Grambling is back. You know, Grambling is back. So what does that mean to you that Grambling is back? We've been the let Eddie Rob. He set us back in the eighties and the nineties, the most winning and college history. And all we know we went we went. This one year we had this down year that we, what we won, one game, Drew? Yeah. One game. That's un Lock gram, that's unethical. That's not us. So right here, we're showing the nation that we back. First down, we are back up. on the map. Grounding. Look at this homecoming. Last year, I, I wasn't here last year, but I'm here this year. We'll be here next year. But to people, program right. is back. All right. Absolutely. Thank you so much, sir. All right, let's get back to, to uh, action. Uh, Pond Bluff, of course, getting the first down with uh, 146 remaining in this last year. 70 to nothing. I almost feel like uh, Gene Wilder in Scare Crazy <laughs> when they go before that judge and he tells him he's going to get 135 years in prison. Here's a tackle right here. Let's give uh, this young man his just due. That's going to be number 56, and that's going to be Traylon Dunn. Dunn, a freshman linebacker from East Feliciana. I don't think you can run that clock any faster. No, you can't. If you're Pine Bluff, it's a word of the time. And and here's the other thing. If I'd have been Pine Bluff, I'd have been almost begging at some point when the scores got to about 50, could we not wind that thing a little sooner? Here is the give. And on the tackle, it's going to be number 56 once again, and that's going to be trailing done. And also in on that was uh, number 35, and that's Chris Grant, freshman defensive back from Shreveport. I'll tell you what, three hours and some change back home for Pine Bluff, that's a long, agonizing ride when you know that you just spotted somebody 70 points. I mean, it was just like, you know what, it, it was like a good old-fashioned whipping in the woodshed with the leather strap. And brother, let me tell you what, the, the strap never stopped uh -uh. from the beginning of this game until the very end. Twelve seconds remaining into homecoming 2016. And the players exchanging pleasantries on the field. And that will do it. The final score, Grambling State University puts up 70. And they shut out. Arkansas Pablo, 70 to nothing. We'll take this two-minute timeout. Two minutes when we come back. We'll have the post-game show sponsored by the Prescription Shop located in Rust. Two-minute timeout. You're listening to Grambling State University football on the Grambling Tiger Radio Network. Oh, that's the wrong one. 